Hey there, my name is Jonathan. In this video, we are going to build this nice and clean Apple stylish music player application using React Native, Expo, TypeScript, and Zustand. Our music player will feature four main tab screens. The initial tab will be the song screen, which will display all of our library tracks within our library. From here, we're gonna be able to scroll through our list of tracks and select the track we want to play. I know you told your friend you're not okay. After having selected a track, a floating player will pop up, just above the tab navigation. If we tap on our floating player, the player screen is going to show up. From here, we are gonna be able to implement most of the important features of a music player, such as play the track, pause the track, seek to a specific time in the track using the slider progress bar, Skip to the next or previous song in the queue. Adjust the player volume. Toggle in the track player repeat mode between off, repeat and repeat queue. And finally, the possibility of marking the current song as one of our favorite songs. The other screen tabs are gonna be the favorite screen, which is going to display our favorite choices tracks. The artist screen will show up all of the artists found in our library. And for each of them, we're gonna have a specific detail screen showing all the tracks related to their artist. And finally, we're gonna have a playlist screen. From this screen, we're gonna be able to search or select a custom playlist. Every playlist will have a detail screen where we're gonna be able to reproduce the tracks appertaining to that playlist. For each of those screens, we're gonna have a native search functionality for searching for a specific song. And also, we will have a play and shuffle button to start playing the listed songs as they were in a queue. We're gonna build this application mainly targeting iOS devices, but you should know that React Native is meant for generating code that runs also on Android devices. So if you want, you could try to run this application also on Android device. Before we get started, I want to highlight the fact that this project will be perfect for learning some of the core functionalities from React Native and Expo. In fact, we're gonna cover many important topics such as managing dynamic list of data using React Native flat list, set up the app navigation using Expo router, managing the application state using a modern state manager like Zustand. And also, we're gonna see how to reproduce audio from a native application using a dedicated library called React Native Track Player. So without further ado, let's get started. All right then. So the first thing that we're going to do is to create a new expo project by running the command yarn create expo dash t. This will ask us what kind of template we want to use. And since that we are gonna use TypeScript, we're going to select blank TypeScript. Our hub name will be music player. And now let's wait for our application installing all the necessary packages. Great, our project is ready, so let's cd inside it. So let's cd inside the music player. And let's clear the console. And we are, should be good, good. So uh, now I'm going to open up this folder inside VS Code also. 
So inside, so inside project, YouTube, music player, let's open it up. Great. And this is our initial Expo project. So for those who are not familiar with Expo, Expo basically is a framework for building native application without using the bare React Native environment. So Expo provide many cool features. For example, the Expo router, which is a way to set up our in-app navigation using a, a file system based router and without installing any third party uh, libraries such as React Navigation, for example. And also it provides, for example, the Expo SDK or Expo Toolkit, which is a suite of uh, libraries useful for accessing native functionality such as the camera, the system storage, uh, the media, and so on. So the first thing that we are going to do now is to quickly set up our project environment. The first thing that we are going to do is inside the VS Code folder, uh, we are going to create a file called settings.json. And here we are gonna paste this configuration right here. So basically here we are setting uh, some utility uh, options such as formatting on save, setting the default formatter, and also organize the imports and enabling the word wrapping. Down in the description, we will find also the GitHub repo in case you need the complete source code of this project. Great, so let's close this. And now let's set up our TypeScript configuration, uh, which right now it's quite empty. So here we are gonna paste this configuration uh, right here. So basically what I did here is setting up some TypeScript option in order to uh, work in a React Native environment. For example, you can see that the JSX is set to React Native, uh, library that we want are the DOM and yes next. Uh, I enable the skip lib check, uh, resolve the JSON module, uh, set up a base URL, uh, and also I set up to the path analysis. For example, when we are going to import by typing this at followed by something else, we are going to reference the source folder. Actually, this folder uh, is not uh, present right now, so we are going to quickly create it. Great, so now every time we are going to import using this um, uh, expression, basically we are going to reference this folder right here. Uh, and also when we are going to type at assets, we are going to reference the assets folder. The assets folder is where we are going to host all of our static files. For example, here you can see that we have um, the splash image, the icon image, uh, five icon, uh, adapt the icon, etc. These are really used by uh, Expo for setting up, for example, the splash screen or the icon that is going to be displayed on our device. Great, and finally we have also other options such as the file to include, the file to exclude, etc. Uh, as always, you will find this file on my GitHub repository. So let's go on. Okay, great. Uh, next step will be setting up a Pretier, which is a code formatter, which will format our code every time we hit save. So for doing that, we are gonna run yarn add dash d right here. Uh, great. Um, so uh, Pretier works with two uh, files. The first one is the Pretier RC, and we have also the dot Pretier uh, ignore. So let me copy the content of Pretier RC. We are going to use this configuration and also for the Pratier ignore, we are going to ignore some file, for example, all the file inside the node modules, the iOS or Android build folder, the assets folder and the expo folder. Uh, great. Okay, at this point, what we can do is to run Pratier a uh, first time. And for doing that, we are gonna run mpx Pratier dash dash write dot. And this basically will um, parse all of our 
files and will run Prettier uh, on all of them. So for example, here you can see that these are all the files that uh, have been um, parsed and formatted by Prettier. Uh, great. Okay, next up, we'll be installing um, one of the most important uh, library provided by Expo, which is Expo Router. So Expo Router is a way for setting up um, our HinApp navigation uh, using a file system based router. So for doing that, we're gonna copy the commands directly from the Expo guides. So we are going to uh, basically install some package. Basically, we are going to run uh, an Expo install and we are going to install Expo Router, React Native Safe Area Context, React Native Screens, Expo Linking, uh, also Expo Constant, and finally Expo Status Bar. So let's run this command and let's wait to um, all the packages being installed. So Expo Router basically will work with a folder called app that we leave under our source folder. So you can see that here we already have an app.tsx file and what we can do is to move this file under this app folder. So let's move it here. And actually we are going to rename it to underscore layout.tsx. So layout.tsx basically is a um, way for telling Expo Router that the current file is um uh, is going to be applied to uh, all of the screens that are under the same folder so all the screens that will live under the app folder will have the same layout in this case uh we don't really have um a real layout here but we actually have uh just a component with a view that display uh, a text okay great so before running our application, uh, we will need to do some other step. For example, uh, let's close this tab and let's move under the package.json. So here, what we are going to do is updating our main entry file and we are gonna say expo router forward slash entry. This is a way to set up our Expo Router to work correctly. Uh, then we need to close this package.json and open up our app.json. This app.json is basically a way to set up our uh, application native uh, configuration. For example, uh, we know that our application is going to use a sort of dark mode. So uh, we can update the user interface style to be uh, dark, for example. And here you can see how um, you, we can set also other property. For example, the icon will be retrieved from under the assets folder and will uh, get the icon.png. Uh, we can set also, for example, a background color here for our splash screen to be dark and the same will be on android even though we are actually not a target android device for this project so here what we are going to do now is to define a property called scheme which is important to have the expo application working correctly and our screen will be music player great uh, also, uh, remember that we have also a bubble.config.js, which is uh, a file for configuring uh, Babel, but uh, the current configuration should work fine. So yeah, uh, double check your project that is uh, actually like that, otherwise it might not work as expected. Great. Okay, under the app.json, we also need to add uh, two new property, which are the experiment uh, experiments property. So under here, we are going to activate the typed routes and set it to true. And also we are going to activate the tsconfig paths to true. So basically this will um, enhance our uh, 
uh, dev experience because with type of routes, we will get type inference for all the routes that we leave under the app folder. And instead with the TS config paths, basically uh, we can basically use the path aliases that we uh, defined inside the TS config.json. So these two right here, uh, great, great job. At this point, we can try to launch our application and see if it's uh, work as expected. So what I'm going to do now is to bring up our iOS simulator. I'm going to increase it a bit so you can um, so you can uh, see it correctly. I'm going also to resize my window in order to um, have the right uh, amount of space. So we will put our simulator on the right hand side of our screen. And you can see that I'm using an iPhone 14 with iOS 17, and this will be our target device. So great, great job. So to launch our application, um, we will need to first clear up the console. Um, if we want to run our application, we uh, generally with Expo, we have two options. The first one will be using Expo Go, or the second one is to create a development build to launch our application. But since we are gonna need to um, use some native libraries, we cannot use Expo Go for this project. So we are gonna need to make uh, a native build for, in this case, iOS, and then run one of these development build also using Expo. So there is a specific guide to how to create uh, a development build using Expo. And what I'm showing, I'm showing you right now is the a guide uh, written by Expo that explain how to uh, create a development build. So since we are targeting uh, iOS, Basically, you can see that we have some requirements. For example, we need a macOS uh, to build project with native code for iOS. And also we, we need uh, some uh, dependency installed in our system. For example, uh, we need a stable version of Node.js and also we need to um, install Watchman. We need Xcode to uh, be installed in our system and also uh, install Cocoa Pods. Uh, I will leave you the link to this uh, guide down in the description, but for now, since I have already all the requirements, basically once we have all of that, uh, we can just run npx expo run iOS. And from that, um, Expo will take over, will create a build of the iOS uh, application and will create basically a running version of our uh, application inside the simulator. Great. So from here, what we are going to do is to run npx expo run iOS. Great. So now it asks us what we would like your iOS bundle identifier to be. So we can use com.music.player. This is just a mock identifier. You are free to choose the one that fits your needs, obviously. And now we are going to wait that Expo will create our iOS build folder. Actually, you can see that it start creating our uh, native iOS build. In fact, it just create our iOS folder just right here. And also you can open this project with Xcode and just running with Xcode. But obviously since we have Expo, we're gonna just use this Expo launcher for this project. So let's wait for the build to finish. And also let's wait, um, this process um, could take uh, a little bit of time because it needs to compile all of our file, transform it into native files. And then finally, we are gonna see our application popping up here. And from there, we are gonna be able to launch our application. 
Great, so our application has been built and you can see on the right hand side that we have a new iOS application named Music Player. If you're gonna tap over this icon, you can see that our app is working fine and is actually showing open up app.tsx to start working on your app. Actually, this comes from the under source folder, the layout.tsx that we were seeing uh, before, or actually this text right here. We're going to set up our uh, application style soon, but before doing that, we need to complete some other configuration for this project. So, so let's close this tab. And one of the most important um, library that we need to installed, it is the Expo Dev Client. So let's run npx expo install expo dash dev dash client. So Expo Dev Client is very useful for running basically a dev menu that is going to pop up uh, over our application when we press a command D. So once the the Expo Dev client is installed, we can relaunch our application by running npx expo run iOS. Great, so our application has been uh, recreated and has been basically rebuilt. And you can see that now this menu pops over and this is basically the Expo Dev Client library that we just added. And you can see that uh, we can open it at any time with this command right here. But generally on macOS, if I press uh, Command D, it should be pop over. And this is actually our dev menu. Uh, it's super important because from here we can toggle many important functionalities. For example, we can reload the app, we can toggle the performance monitor, we can also toggle the element inspector in case we want to debug our UI and many more options. So let's close this tab and yeah, let's go, let's go ahead with our app configuration. Great, our final missing utility library that we are going to install it is ESLint. So let's run yarn add dash d ESLint then ESLint dash plugin dash react and also ESLint dash plugin dash react dash hooks. Uh, why we, we are installing ESLint is to avoid possible errors uh, while using uh, React, for example, avoiding infinite rendering or avoiding using custom hooks like use effect or, or use layout effect without incurring into subtle problems. So once those packages are installed, what we are going to do is to create two new files, which are going to be ESLint RC json and i'm going to paste the configuration of yeslint uh, as always you will find this file um, on my github repo and also finally the yeslint in order to ignore uh, some file that we don't want to be uh, linted basically so let's paste all the files that we don't want to be uh, linted and finally uh, what we need is to go inside the package.json and create a new scripts under the scripts property. So let's go here and let's define a script called um, lint. And this script is going to run eslint on the current folder. A uh, great job. So uh, what we can do is to test it out. So let's run yarn lint. Okay, it seems that we are missing a plugin. So let's immediately install it. So let's run yarn add dash d TypeScript yeslint yeslint plugin. And let's wait to be installed. Let's clear the console and let's try to run it again our lint. 
Okay, uh, seems that we are missing some other property. I think we need to add also another library called TypeScript ESLint parser. So let's run it. And let's try it another time, hoping for more luck. And yeah, it, it, it's working fine. We only have one warning that say that the React version not specified in, in the Eslin plugin React settings, but for now we can just ignore this warning. Uh, great, so let's close these tabs. So let's minimize our terminal. Let's close this package JSON. Now it's time to start working on our application. So before starting, let's take a quick look at the preview of our application layout. So here you can see that we have different things uh, going on in our application. So the first thing that you might notice is that we have a bottom tab navigation. This bottom tab have four different tabs, the favorite tabs, the playlist tab, the songs tab, and the artist tab. We're gonna start to implement these four tabs and each of them will be obviously a separate screen. So let's start by setting up our in-app navigation and also define some initial styles. So the first thing that we are going to do inside the source folder, we are going to create a new folder called constants. Inside this folder, then we are going to create a new file called tokens. The tokens file will store some constant token related to our application style, like colors, font sites, and script padding. So let's start with define our color palette. So export const colors, and this will be equal to, actually, let me just uh, paste it. So this is some common colors that we are going to use throughout our application. We have this primary color, which is a soft red. We have the background, which is basically uh, black. We have text color set to white, uh, text muted, which is uh, basically a soft gray. We have colors for our icon and also two different color called maximum tracking color and minimum tracking colors that are going to be used by our slider progress bar, like the volume bar or the track progress bar. Great. Then let's define also some font size. In this case, we are going to define uh, extra small set to 12, uh, small set to 16, uh, base, will be set to 20 and also large set to 24 pixel. Then we are gonna also have the screen padding set to horizontal and we are gonna have 24. So we're gonna be use the screen padding to set some horizontal padding in all of our screen. Great, next step, we are gonna also to create a new folder called styles. Inside these styles, we're going to create a new file called index.ts. Great. Inside this file, we are going to define a default, some default styles that are gonna use the style sheet API from React Native. So stylesheet.create and actually we need to import this style sheet from React Native. So import style sheet from React Native. And actually this is with a capitalized S here and also here. Great. So the default style will be uh, a container default style, which will have a flex set one and a background color set to colors dot background and these colors you can see that we are importing it from the constant token file that we are just previously defined and you can see 
how our pathalysis are working just fine. Great. So as default style, we're gonna also have a default style for our text where the font size will be font size dot base and also the color will be colors dot text. Uh, we're gonna also have some utils styles uh, that we are going to define it uh, later. But for now, let's just declare this constant since we're gonna reuse it later. Great. Actually, we need to export both of these uh, constant styles in order to be imported from a different file from our application. So now let's focus on creating our app navigation with the bottom tab navigation that we have seen before. So let's close this tab and let's open the app layout file. So inside here, we can actually remove everything. And we are actually gonna have um, an app file, which is going to be the, uh, the component entry point of our uh, application. And this will be a classic React component. And at the same file, we are also going to define the root navigation. And this will also be a React component. It's super important to also export um, the app entry point as the default export, otherwise export other will not work as expected. So the app uh, component will be the perfect place for initialize important part of our application, such as our truck player or defining some important provider. One of the most important provider that we're gonna need is the safe area provider. So let's define it. And inside the safe area provider, we are gonna also basically return the root navigation that we are gonna, we are going to define soon, uh, which is this component right here. Uh, at the same level, we are going to also use the status bar. And this status bar will come from Expo status bar. Um, the status bar, for the status bar, we are going to define a prop uh, style and we're going to set to auto. So the status bar basically, now the application is not working as expected because we have some error, but the status bar basically is the uh, top bar that we are seeing right here. So basically by setting auto, we are telling uh, the application that since our application is using a dark mode style, the main color for the text displayed must be white, otherwise the contrast will not be visible. Great. So at this point, we can start define our root navigation. So um, our root navigation will actually not be, uh, as you might expect, directly our tab navigation, but will be a stack navigation coming from export outer. So let's define this stack. And inside this stack, we will have uh, a stack dot screen, which will basically redirect inside the group tabs. The group tabs basically are going to be defined right now. So let's go inside the app folder and let's define a group called tabs. So the tabs group basically is delimited by opening and closing parentheses, and it's used by Expert Router for grouping common screens that share common layout or common domains, for example. In this case, we are referencing it as a screen, and we're gonna place here, inside here, hold our bottom tab navigation screen in order to be used later. So here we are gonna also define an option called header uh, shown uh, set to false. Otherwise this will have some wrapping issue. And also what we are going to do now uh, is to define a root layout for our tab screens. So let's go here and let's define our root layout.tsx. So inside the tabs layout.tsx, we are going to define a const called tabs navigation. 
and this will be a React component. As always, we need to export uh, these components as the default one. So export default tabs navigation. So the tabs navigation basically will use the tabs from export router. And inside here, basically, we are gonna have four different screen. The first will be tabs dot screen with name favorites. Then we are gonna have another tabs dot screen with name playlist. Uh, another one which will be with name of. Actually, here we are gonna use a group folder since this will be basically our index or the initial tabs that we want the user to be displayed when he opens the application. And finally, we are gonna have also the fourth tab, which is going to be the artist tab. Ah, uh, great. Obviously, we need to return this. And you can see that the application is not working because we are we are not yet defined uh, these four tabs. So in order to work, let's start by creating our necessary folder. So for the songs folder, we are gonna use a grouping folder. This is because, as I said before, this will be our main tab screen that is going to be displayed. So we can we need to wrap it inside a group folder in order to tell Expo Router to treat it as the index screen. So inside here, what we can do is basically creating two files. First will be the layout.tsx and also the index.tsx. Inside the layout.tsx, we are going to export, we are going to define the songs screen layout. This will be our React component. And here, what we are going to return is a view coming from React Native. This view will have a style that will come from, from our default styles dot container. Great. And inside this view, basically, we are going to have a stack. And inside this stack, we are going to have a stack screen, which is going to reference our index file or this one right here. Also, we can specify some option and say that the header title here is gonna be songs. Great. And as always, we need to export default songs screen layout. So you might be wondering why we need to wrap, like use an inner stack uh, inside a view. So this outer view basically is like is acting like a background, a background that will be that will use the default style container, which will set the background color property set to the black color property. So this way we are gonna have a dark background, and instead we are gonna use an inner stack screen in order to leverage some functionality and feature that a stack screen provides like animation, like um, other search functionality and also many other things that will be more clear when we are going to showcase the application. So the next step will be go inside the index.tsx of our song screen. So here we are going to define our scan screen component. And for now, what we are going to return is a view with, actually let's import this from React Native and the style will be default styles.container. Great. And as always, we need to export the default um, songs screen and actually uh, we can also display a text inside and we can import the text from React Native. And here we are going to say songs screen. Great. Actually, you can see that something is popping off on the right side, but is not actually work as we expect. 
um, the text will be also have a style and the style will be the default style dot text. You can see that how uh, this text is now uh, correctly showing up inside our uh, inner screen. And also you can see um, how we have an initial um, first tab. Uh, here we have the text and here we have the title. So something is, we are coming from our desired results. So now what we need to do is to do the exact same thing for the other four tabs. So let's close all of these tabs. And now uh, let's increase the Explorer um, size. And inside the tabs group folder, we are going to create also the other three tabs. So we say that we are gonna have the favorites, we are gonna have the artists, and we are gonna have also the playlist. Also, you might have noticed that compared to the song screen, we are not using a grouping folder. This is because the artist, favorite, and playlist must be treated as different screens. Let's go inside our favorites folder. And as we did before, let's create layout.tsx and also index.tsx. Uh, actually, what we can do is to copy this two file from the songs uh, group folder. Uh, we can delete this and just paste it inside the favorites. Obviously, we need to update the name. For example, we know that this is the favorite. So let's go here and let's rename to favorites screen. And also I'm going to rename the text displayed. And we're going to do the exact same thing also for the layout. This is going to become the favorites screen layout. The title will become favorites. Great, let's see. Okay, you can see that now favorites is um, displayed correctly. And actually, it's actually working. If I, if I tap over the favorites, you can see that we changed the screen correctly. And also you can see that here, uh, the title are also updated correctly. So, okay, let's do the exact same thing also for the artist and playlist. So let's go inside the playlist. Let's paste this stuff and let's rename this to um, playlist, playlist, actually playlist screens. Uh, this will be the playlist screen. Awesome. And also here, we're going to rename this as the playlist screen layout. The other title will be playlist as the title. Let's see if it's working. Yeah, it's working. And okay, finally we missed the artist. So let's go inside the artist. So artists screen layout. This will be artist. Sorry, artists are great. And this will be the artist screen. Let's update this artist uh, screen. Great. Um, yeah, it's working just fine. So now if you go inside the artist, you can see that uh, it's probably uh, working fine. But as you might have noticed, the styles is not looking fine. You can see that this, um, the bottom navigation and also the other navigation is being rendered with a light mode style. And obviously we are going to do it soon. So let's close all of our uh, tabs and now let's, collapse all the folders and let's go back to our tabs layout. Okay, great. So inside here, we're going to define some option uh, in order to have our bottom tab navigation and header navigation looking fine. So inside the tabs, let's define the screen option property. And inside here, we're gonna specify multiple property. First off, we're going to define tab bar active in color, and this will be equals to colors dot, we need to import our colors from the tokens. 
and this will be uh, colors.primary and you can see that they become uh, just red. Great. Then we are going to define the top bar label style. This will have the font size set to font size dot extra small and also a font weight set to 500. Great. You can see that how the font size has increased noticeably. Then we are going to also to that the header shown set to false. And you can see that the top header, which was innerly set by the stock screen that we set for each of those four tabs, is now not showing. So how do we achieve the bottom bar navigation dark blue red background? So if you recall from our preview, you might remember or you might notice that the background of this bottom bar navigation is slightly blurred, is dark, and it also has some kind of border radius right here. So in order to achieve this, this cool effect, we need a library called um, a component called blur view that will come from a library called expo blur so let's open up our terminal and let's run npx expo install expo blur great now let's go back to our screen option and here let's define a property called tab tab bar background so here we are going to specify actually a component without the curly braces actually and this component will be the blur view okay we can see that we have some errors but i think that's because we have to restart our application from the beginning so Let's define our blur view and then we are going to fix this error. So let's set up an intensity for this blur or 95. And let's also define a style. This style will be, first off, we're gonna use the style sheet dot absolute fill object. And we are going to import the style sheet from React Native. Import style sheet from react native great so then we need overflow set to hidden this will come in anti to achieve the border radius then we set the border top left radius to 20 and also border top right radius also set to 20 great we're gonna also to define a tab bar style and this tab bar style will have a position set to absolute. It will have a border top left radius set to 20. Same for the border top right radius set also to 20. Then a border top width set to zero. And finally a padding top set to eight. Great. So our tabs uh, our tab navigation should be set up now to to recover from this error what we are going to do is to is going to uh, kill that process and let's try to rerun our application so npx npx expo run ios let's close this application and let's wait for export rebuild our application from scratch great our application has been restarted automatically and you can see how the tab bar now looks very nice with this uh, blur background that i don't know if it's super visible by the video but it should be blurred and we actually achieved our dark bottom bar navigation so what we are missing right now 
is an icon for each of these tab and also a nicely formatted tab name. So for doing that, let's minimize the terminal and let's scroll down to our tab screen. So what we are going to do now is to define some option for each of those tab screen. So let's start with the favorite tab screen. So here we are going to specify the title to favorites. Then we are going to have a tab bar, a bar icon, and this will be basically a React component. The icon that we're going to use will come from Expo icons. So in this case, we are going to import, for example, font awesome from uh, React, actually not React, but Expo at Expo vector icons. So let's scroll it down and, and let's use font or font awesome icon. And yeah, for, for this icon, we are gonna use the heart icon. The size will be 20 and the color actually will be received from the prop of this component. Basically this props is passed from our top screen provider down to our icon. Uh, great, and as you can see that our, now the favorite uh, tab is nicely formatted. And we're gonna do the same thing for the other remaining tabs. So let's go here, let's paste this stuff. Now we are editing the playlist, so let's name this playlists. And actually for the playlist, we are gonna use material community icons. So let's go here, let's import material community icons. Let's go back here and let's define playlist. It will be playlist play uh, with a size of 28. Great, let's hit save. And you can see how it looks fine. Great, so let's do the exact same thing for the song screen. Here, we are going to set the title to songs and we are gonna use the Ionicons icon. So let's go here, let's import Ionicons. And here we are gonna use the musical note star with a size of 24. Actually, the, the right name is musical notes sharp. Yeah. And you can see how it looks very, very nice. Great. Let's do the exact same thing for the artist tab. Uh, rename this as artist. And for this one, we are gonna use the font awesome six. So let's go here and import in font awesome six. And the name will be users line with a size of 20. And there we go, our artist tab now is looking fine. Great. Now it's time to start working on our header. So let's take back our preview and you can see that the header has basically some custom styling. You can see that this left aligned is actually using a pretty big font size. It has a search functionality and also it has these two buttons, but um, the play and shuffle button is actually related to another part of our component. So we are gonna see later how to implement those. This is a very common native layout style uh, that is actually not so difficult to achieve thanks to the Expo router uh, navigation. So let's see how we can implement this header. What we're going to do is inside the constant folder, we are going to create a new file called layout.ts. Inside here, we are going to define a constant variable called stack screen with search bar. 
and this will be of type native stack navigation options and this type will come from react navigation native stack so let's copy this and let's paste it here great actually we are missing an s and also here great now we should have the type inference for all the property so here we are going to specify basically all the options that we need to display our header so the first option will be the header large title set it to true then we're gonna have the header large style and this will be an object with a background color set to colors dot background let's import this from the tokens and this actually will be background then we're gonna have header large title actually gonna be header large title style and this is gonna be color set to colors dot text this is going to update basically the text color of our header then we're gonna have the header tint color set to colors dot text finally we're gonna have the header transparent set to true we're gonna have the header blur effect set to prominent and finally we're gonna have the header shadow visible set to false great let's now use this constant navigation style inside our or main different top screen so let's go under the hub folder and let's start with the song screen so let's open up the layout and along with the header title now we are going to spread all the option of the stuff the stack screen with search bar that we have just defined and obviously we need to import this from the constant layout so let's hit save let's move on to the song screen and you can see that is actually looking very fine we are actually missing the search bar functionality but we are gonna add it later on so let's do the exact same thing for the other four tabs so let's go under the artist and paste it this one and import it let's check it great let's go under the favorites paste it port it then save it and it's looking fine and finally the playlist so let's go here let's paste this import it save it and it's looking actually super fine great great job okay now we should be ready to start implementing our first screen which will be the song screen so let's take a look at a preview of our song screen so basically here we're gonna have a list of multiple tracks and for each of these uh, list item which will represent a song basically we will display the title the uh, artist we're going to display the artwork uh, image uh, and also every item will also have a sort of option uh, menu that I'm going to show you what is going to do. So let me go here and let me open the track option and you can see that basically this option will permits us to uh, adding or removing the track from the favorites or adding the track to a playlist. Uh, great. So I think that we can start by closing uh, most of these uh, tabs. And now what we are going to do is to create a new folder called components, which will hold most of our React components. So what we are going to do now is to create a component that is going to display a list of a list of songs that it might be scrolled through so this component will be called tracks list.tsx 
So let's export this trucks list component, which will be a React component. And basically here, what we are going to do is retard, uh, we are going to use the flat list component that will come from React Native. So basically flat list is a very high performance list component that is used to display a list of data which will might contains multiple items so performance are very important here so this component takes an input to required properties the data which will represent the list of items inside our component and also a function called uh, render item which will basically be the uh, function to render uh, each of these item as you might be wondering, you might ask yourself how we are going to retrieve the songs playlist that we are going to display inside this application. So for that, we are going to create inside the assets folder, a new folder called data. And inside this data, we are going to paste this library.json file. So let's take a look at this library.json. So this file will represent our library. So we are not going to actually use a third party API. We are not using a file system for this application because it's a bit out of scope of this project, but uh, we're going to use this sort of uh, mocked library. Uh, this library will contains different items. Each of these items will have these properties. For example, the URL of the songs that is going to be hosted on this uh, platform called audio.jukehost. And also we are going to display some metadata information about the songs like the title, uh, the artist, the artwork image, uh, the rating, which will be used for to know which track has been favorite by the user. And also every track might be um, assigned into one or multiple playlists. In fact, you can see that uh, you can see here that the playlist is an array of playlist that that songs appertain to. For example, you can see that this song's uh, uh, title Anxieties um, is already present in the chill playlist, instrumental playlist and rap playlist. So the important uh, takeaway is that these libraries will be the source of our data that we are going to display inside our application. Uh, great. We can go back here to our track list component. And for now, what we can do is to uh, import this library. What we are going to do for now is import the library from, we can say assets slash data slash library. So we can pass this library uh, down to the data prop of the flat list. So once we are here, we need to render our track list item. So for doing that, we're going to extract another component called track list item .tsx. So let's export this component. So track list item, and let's define a React component. And so this component basically will be wrapped by a touchable highlight since it will be basically uh, a button that once pressed will start uh, our song. So we are gonna have also a parent view and we need to import this view from React Native. And so let me just get back our uh, preview. So you can see that a track list item is this single item that we see uh, right here. So we need to display the title, the artist, and the artwork uh, image uh, in this way. So let's make it work. So we have this parent, and we need actually to figure out how 
to display an image. So we might be tempted to use the image uh, that comes from React Native, but I see that uh, for this project was not the um, our best option. Actually, we are going to use most enhanced um, image component called Fast uh, Image that will come from a third party library. So let's open up our terminal and let's open up actually a new terminal and let's run npx expo install uh, react dash native dash fast image. Great. Also, while this package is installing, we are going to also to import some default images. Let's see what we need to import. If you open up the assets under the data, we are going to paste these two new image. And the image are the unknownartist.png and the unknowntrack.png. These two images will be used when we encounter an artist or a track that does not have artwork image defined. So at the same time, what we can do is going inside the inside the constant folder, we can create a new file called images.ts. And here, what we can do is to import the image that we just have imported inside the assets folder. So for example, import unknown artist image from slash asset slash unknown. Actually, you can see that we do not get type safety support for images. In order to, to have that, we have to actually define we actually have to define a file called index.d.ts that will enhance our TypeScript runtime environment to take in consideration, for example, images. Uh, to do that, we can go here, create a new folder called types, and inside here, we can create the index.d.ts, and we can just paste these two modules inside. This will uh, permit TypeScript to treat all the uh, file extension that will have PNG or JPEG as files that can be imported inside our code base, so from within our file. So now if we go back here inside our images.ts, you can see that we can import the image. So here we are importing the unknown artist and actually we are gonna do the same thing for the, oops, for the um for the track so unknown track and this will become unknown track uh image uh great at this point what we can do is uh define to export the first one will be a no track image uri which will basically uh, will resolve the asset source of the unknown track image and will return the URI. Actually, for doing that, we need to import image from uh, React Native, and we are actually going to do the exact same thing for the unknown artist image URI. So in this way, when we notice that um, an artist does not have an image or a track does not have an artwork, we can just fall back to these two images. Great, great job. So now let's go back to our track list item. And here we can just use our fast image uh, component. So let's import fast image from React Native fast image. Okay, actually, it seems to have some problem. Oh yeah, because this one is not a um, membered export, but is a default export. So yeah, that way it should work. So as I was saying, the first image will take two props. The first one is the source prop and is the source of our image. In this case, we need to specify what is the source of the track that we are rendering. Actually, here we do not have a track. Uh, so what we can do is to take uh, in input the track we want to render. So let's go here and let's define a type called track list item props. And this will take in input the track. 
a truck for now has a title which is a string and also an image that will be an optional string and that's because not every truck will have an image defined so let's hit save and let's extract this prop from the truck list item props and here what we can do is say that the source will take a new ri property and this will be the truck dot uh, image or in case it's not defined we're gonna use the unknown truck image uri as fallback image uh, great also we can specify the priority of this image and we can just set fast image dot priority dot normal great uh, also uh, this will not be the real type of our truck since when we are going to install the React Native truck player, we will see that we are going to have a specific type that will match the type that we have seen inside the library JSON file. Uh, great, but for now, this is uh, also for showcase the result. Okay, great. So let's define also another property called uh, style. And here, basically, what we are going to say is to paste all the styles name truck artwork uh, image actually we need to define this uh, style so let's go here let's type rnss and let's import uh, style sheet from react native and let's paste the style for the truck work image so basically we are setting the width and height to be 50 and a border radius of 8 uh, great so another option that we might be set um, is to set a dynamic uh, opacity based on based on the if the current item is the active truck or not so for now let's suppose that uh, um this truck uh is not the active playing truck so let's set it to false but in the other case what we are going to do is set the a dynamic opacity and if it is the active truck we are gonna set 0 0.6 otherwise we are gonna set uh one uh great also what we can do it's defining uh, uh, the truck title and the artist so so here we're gonna have another view and this view will have a style of width set to 100 percent and inside this view basically here we are going to display the truck title and artist even though uh, we are not have an artist so the truck title plus artist so uh let's take the artist as input so let's set the artist uh here and also as optional because it's possible that a truck does not have an artist set so inside the here we are gonna have a uh, text and this text will come from react native so let's go here let's define the text uh great and the text will be the truck dot title. Okay, obviously we need to specify some uh, props. For example, the number of lines will be one in order to not wrap into multiple line the title. And also we are gonna have a style. This style will have a uh, three default styles that we're gonna name track title, uh, track title text. And also we are gonna specify the color to be if is it is an active truck we're gonna set the colors dot uh let's import the colors colors dot primary or otherwise it will be uh colors dot text great so we need to define this truck title dot text let's go inside our uh, local styles and let's paste this truck title text style here let's import the default style.txt and let's import also the token so basically the truck title text will be will have a font size small a font weight of uh, 600 and a max width of 90 percent uh great 
and also if it is the active draft we are gonna color the title text as red great also what we are going to do is to uh, render also the artist of that track so if the track artist is defined we are gonna add that text so let's go here and let's add a new text which will display the track dot artist great as always the number of lines this will be one and the style will be uh, styles draw dot track artist uh, text and we need to define uh, this style as well let me just paste it here uh, basically it has the color text is a soft gray font size set to 14 and a margin top of 4 uh, great uh, finally we want this like the title text and the first image be wrapped inside a parent with container so let's copy all this content let's paste it here okay great so let's try to uh, take a look at the result so let's go back to our track list component and here what we can do is to extract the property item and rename it as the track and here what we're going to do is to use the track uh, list item and obviously we need to pass the track and the track will have the title which will be equal to track dot title also we'll have an artist set to track dot artist and finally an image that will be track dot uh, artwork actually these two are not needed we can just do uh, we can just use the uh, spread operator like that and we should be good to go now what we are going to do is to render this track list so let's go ahead inside our app folder let's open up the songs um, index uh, the songs index file and inside here instead of rendering all of this uh, this text we are gonna use a scroll view and inside this scroll view we are gonna have the track uh, list awesome now you might be wondering why we should need to um, wrap the track list which is a flat list inside a scroll view this will come in ending to have basically uh, the navigation that will display here acting correctly when we scroll through the list of songs and it's like a sort of workaround but it's the only way I found to make it work uh, nicely so actually here we need to pass some props to this tracks list so inside this component we are going to define the, the props for the track list called track tracks list props and basically it will generate all the props of a flat list but we are not making them required so we are going to use it partial then flat list uh, props and we need to also pass the generic which for now is unknown now let's get the flat list uh, props here and let's type the track list props here so now what we can do is to spread all of these props uh, just right here okay we are getting some error but uh, soon we are going to 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 fix those great so here it's important to set the scroll enable to false so otherwise we will get some runtime uh, error and um, it say that react children expect to receive a single react children element inside the touchable highlight so i think that the problems is inside the track list item because the the children of a touchable highlight must be unique so what we're going to do is to add another wrapper view and take all of this content and paste it here and then actually we are going to uh, define a style for this uh, parent wrapper and this style will be styles.track item 
uh, container. So let's go here and let's paste the style for the track item container, which will say flux direction row, column gap 14, align items center and pointing rank to 20. So we are getting some error and this comes from the fast image view. So since we are basically uh, installed a native library, sometimes it we need to rebuild our uh, native builds from scratch in order to, to make it work. So in order to do that, we first stop our application, and then we run npx expo rebuild uh, dash p ios since we are targeting ios dash dash clean. So this will basically uh, clean our currently native directories, and then we are going to rebuilding uh, those with npx expo run ios. So let's wait to the process to complete. Great, at this point, we can run npx expo run iOS, and let's wait for the build to complete, and then it should work as we expect. Okay, so our application has been rebuilt from scratch, so we can run it again. So let's tap on music player, and you can see we just achieved uh, pretty good results for me, even though we have some trouble with spacing, but you can see that the images are displayed right, the title of the each tracks is displayed correctly, and also we can actually scroll uh, through the list of tracks, and you can see also that we got a very uh, nice effect when we scroll uh, through. And this is thanks to the stack screen animation provided by React Navigation that Expo Router use under the hood. Great. So what we can do right now is adjusting those spacing issue that we have and specifying like a separator and adding some uh, margin between each item. For doing that, we are going to go back to our track list uh, component. And here, uh, just above the track list definition, we are going to uh, define a component called item divider, which is an inline component, which is basically a view. With a style. And this style will be the utils styles dot item separator, which we are going to define soon. Set the margin vertical to nine, and also the margin left to sixty. Uh, great. So let's define this util style. So let's go inside our constant. And let's go, actually, let's go inside our styles, index.ts. And here, uh, remember that we have this util style. So here we are going to define item separator. And this will be equal to this style right here. So we specify a border color to be a soft gray. We specify a border width to be airline width from style sheet and an opacity of uh, 0.3. Uh, great. So now we need to import this util style. And then uh, inside the flat list component, we are going to specify a prop called item separator, uh, separator component, and this will be our item divider. Great. Let's hit save. And you can see that now our elements are nicely spaced and we are actually having a very soft divider right here that uh, I don't know if it's super visible, but on a real device uh, should look very nice. And maybe on your screen will look uh, actually more clear rather uh, on, the, on the video. But the most important thing uh, is that is working. What we are going to do now is going back to, so actually, and right now we are inside the track list. Uh, let's go back to our songs uh, index file. 
And in here, remember that we were using a scroll view that we're wrapping our uh, track list. So here, what we're going to do is define a style for our scroll view. For example, we're going to set the content insert, adjust, insert adjustment um, behavior set to automatic. And then we are going to also set a style. This style will be have a padding horizontal set to screen padding dot horizontal. And that's it. So you can see that now we have our components. We have our main screen be, uh, being applied some horizontal padding to actually looks more uh, clear. Great, great job. Also, if we try to scroll, you can see that we have also this nice scroll bar uh, effect, which is very nice to see. Uh, great, great job. So the next step now will be adding the search bar functionality just below the song's title. So for doing that, React Navigation actually provide um, an option called Adder Search Bar that can be applied to the stack screen option. In fact, if we go under here, um, we should be able to add Adder Search Bar option. And this will permit us to uh, apply our search functionalities. But the problems of declaring this option here is that we will not have uh, room to manage our search text uh, input. So what we are going to do is to define a new folder called hooks. And we are going to have a hook specific for managing the search functionality. Use navigation search .tsx. So let's export use navigation search. And this hook will first define some default search option, which will of type search bar props and will come from React Native screens. And here we are going to define the tint color set to colors dot primary. And also let's set the height when height when crawling set to false. Let's add a comma. Great. So inside this hook, we're going to have a state and this state is going to hold the search text that we just typed in. So let's set the set search set uh, set action. And here we're gonna use the use state to come from react. It's importing and the default will be an empty search. Great. Then we're going to declare a variable called navigation and we're going to use the use navigation from expo router. This will permit us to add those property, in particular the adder search option that we were seeing before, uh, on top of the current screen that is declaring this hook. Great. So let's go ahead and let's type a hook called use layout effect. Inside this use layout effect, we are going to execute a callback function. Let's define the dependency array to be empty. So by using the navigation, now we can access the set options and this inside this set option, we are going to define the adder search bar options. And in here, we are going to pass the default search option. Then we are going to actually, okay, for now we can just declare this. Inside the dependency array, we have to declare the navigation. Uh, also, we want this use navigation search be, uh, we want to have some control over this use navigation search, uh, especially on the props that we are setting uh, in here. So what we are going to do is define some input props that we're going to take uh, as input. So here we're going to define a search bar options 
uh, that will be optional and will be of type search bar props. So here we are going to extract this search bar option. Once we extract it from here, we are going to spread it out just right here. Uh, great. Uh, and finally, we need to define uh, an handler called onChange text. So basically, onChange text is a callback function that will update our search when we are going to type something in our uh, search bar. So what we are going to do now is to define a new handler function called handle on change text. This will be of type search bar props uh, of type of the property on change text. And here we are going to define this callback function. So here we can extract the native event and inside the native event, we can also extract the text property. Great. So here we are going to set the search to be equals to the, the text that has been input by the user. Great. And finally, inside the unchanged text, we are going to pass the handle unchanged text. Uh, also, we need to define this handle unchanged text. Um, Actually, we need to define the search bar option over here. Okay, great. So the final thing that we are left to do is to return the current uh, search that will come from the this use state that we define over here. Great. Now we can start using this useful uh, use navigation search hook inside our song screen. So let's open up the app folder tabs songs. Uh, index. Let's close the explorer, and over here we are gonna set const search equals to use navigation search, and this will be equal to the search bar option. We are gonna pass the search bar option, and we are gonna pass a placeholder to be find in songs. Uh, great. If we hit save, you can see that the search bar option is displayed on top of our screen. And also, if we scroll back to the top, we can see that we have the title and the search bar. And as soon as we scroll down, you can see that how the search bar remains uh, attached on, uh, on top of our header component. And that is awesome. Also, if we tap on the search bar, we are able to search whatever we want. We also have a button for clearing the text. We have, for example, a cancel button and so on. So our search functionality is almost ready. Okay, another thing that I would like to update is to adding a little bit of spacing over uh, this part because it's too attached to the search bar option. So for doing that, let's go back inside the tracks list. And over here, we are going to define the content container uh, style to be equal to having a padding top of 10 and a padding bottom of 128. Let's save it. And you can see that we have now a little more uh, room to breathe. And also if we scroll the entire list of songs, you can see that we have some space left here. And this will be super important to display our floating player just above the tab navigation. Also, you might have noticed that the last item in this list does not have any uh, divider. And we can just add it by defining a list footer component to be equal to the item divider. So now, even if it's not super visible, also the last item has the uh, item divider display on the bottom. Great. Also, what we can do is to actually implement the navigation, the search functionality for this screen. So let's go back. So let's close all of these tabs. 
And let's go back inside our songs index file. So here, what we need to do is to basically filtering the songs based on the current search functionality. So for doing that, we are first going to import the library from the assets slash data slash library. And from here, we are going to define a new variable called filtered songs. And we're going to use the use memo hook in order to uh, just not waste it because filtering could be a pretty expensive operation. So we're going to wrap it with use memo in order to avoid calculating the filter songs on every re-render. So great. Uh, what we're going to do here is that if we don't have a search, we're just uh, going to return the library. Otherwise, what we're going to do is to filter our library songs. So in this way, we're going to do library.filter and here uh, we're going to specify a filter predicate in order to filter the songs. So for doing that, uh, let's create a specific file for managing all of our filters. So inside the, uh, the source folder, let's define a new folder called helpers that will hold some of the utility function that we are going to use throughout this project. So inside here, we're going to create a file called filter.ts that will hold some of the filters that we are going to use throughout this project. So here I'm going to paste the track title filter. So basically for now, let's put Henny here. So basically the track title filter, what, uh, what it does is taking the track uh, the track title, uh, transform it to lowercase and compare it uh, with the current title that has been uh, searched, obviously by transforming it to lowercase. Great. So we can go here, we can pass the track title filter and pass it the search that is currently active on the song screen. So here we need also to define a dependency array with the search and the library. Great. Also library is not needed actually. Uh, but now you might have noticed that we have our filtered songs, but we are not passing these songs uh, to the track list. So we can go here and actually define a list of our tracks over here. For now, I'm going to use any, but soon we're going to use a specific type for the tracks. So now inside the tracks list, we can extract the tracks and pass this inside the data. Great. As you can see, something uh, seems to have broken and, and that's because inside our songs index, we need to pass the prop tracks to be equals to the filtered songs. Actually, to be more compliant, I'm going to rename this to filtered uh, tracks. Great. So now everything seems to work and let's try it out our search functionality. For example, let's see what happens if I search for the title memories. You can see that is actually working. For example, let's see all the tracks that start with the letter A you can see that we get all of the tracks that I think that contains the letter A. For example, if we want this track here, hot lenta, let's see hot, and you can see that is working just fine. Great. All right, then I think that we are ready now for introduce one of the most important libraries to have this application work as a music player application. We are going to install a package called React Native Track Player. So React Native Track Player is a fully fledged audio models created for music apps. And if we take a look at the get started, um, actually in the intro, we can see that this library features many cool features that are super important for a music player application. For example, uh, it feels native. 
so it follows the same design principle as real music apps do. It's multi-platform, we have media control support, uh, we, are, we are able to fetch uh, songs from local or from network, we have support for bitrate streaming support, it's built on top of React hooks, and actually I just tried it out and it's very well done. So shout out to the creator of React Native Track Player and we're gonna take a look at the installation. So the installation is not super uh, straightforward, especially on, on iOS. It seems that we might need to set up some uh, files with the Xcode. Uh, for example, here we, ne we need to enable Swift modules. But actually, when I was building this application, I didn't uh, need this step right here. But yeah, in case you have some troubles, uh, I suggest you to, to follow the installation guide from uh, the beginning. So. Actually, uh, React Native Track Player support uh, Expo, so it should not be so difficult to integrate in our project. Great, so let's dismiss this tab and let's open up a, a terminal. Let's create a new terminal actually, and let's run npx expo install uh, React Native Track Player. Okay, at this point, another important thing to do will be go inside the app.json uh, and here under the iOS property, we are going to define the info p list and just right here, we are going to set up UI, background uh, modes and we are gonna set uh, actually this is expect an array and we're gonna set audio. This is a requirement to have the React Native Track Player work as expected, especially with background uh, modes. Uh, great. Okay, so now let's try to relaunch our application from scratch and see if everything is working fine. So let's run npx expo run iOS. Let's try to Let's close the current application. And yeah, it seems that we are getting some error. And that's because I think that we need to restall our native directory. So let's run npx expo prebuild uh, dash dash clean. Let's uh, proceed. And now we are going to install all the dependencies again from scratch because uh, we installed a native library, so we need to rebuild everything from scratch. Okay, the rebuild process is done, then we can run npx expo run iOS. Great, now the application has compiled and it's working fine. So now we have the React Native Track Player uh, installed correctly and the first thing that I'm going to do is closing this tab, go back inside the track list and here we can start using the type track that will come directly from React Native Track Player. Great. So now we can also specify track here and here you can see that we are getting some some error. I think that we can just remove this and pass the current track and let's see what the problem is. Yeah, because is that is because uh, over here we have to just update our type to using the track from React Native Track Player. Uh, great, so everything should work as expected now, uh, even though uh, we are getting some trouble with the, with the images, seems to, every image uh, seems to be loaded from, to not load correctly the image. And that's because here, inside the first image, we cannot, uh, we do not have the track.image property, but we have the track.artwork property. And you can see that now, 
is getting back working as expected. Great. Let's also try to run a PSC, which will compile all of our TypeScript files and we are not getting any error. So we should be good to go. Great. Now let's close all of these tabs and I'm going to create um, inside the hooks folder, a new hook called use setup track layer.tsx. So inside this hook, basically we're going to set up our React Native track player. So let's export our use setup track player. And basically what we are going to do inside this hook is running a news effect that will run only on mount and that will set up our track player for working as we expect. So before doing that, I'm going to define a function over here called setup layer, which will be an async function. And over inside this function, uh, we are going to run some command to set up the player. For example, the first thing that we are going to execute is track player that will come from React Native track player dot setup player. And here we can pass some option. And one option that I would like to pass is the max cache size set to, in this case, 10 megabytes. Uh, this way, some song will be uh, cached and we will get a slightly more better user experience, avoiding some possible buffering between uh, multiple songs, since uh, we have to remember that the songs are fetched from an external API, so we might be encounter some uh, buffering since we have to download the songs. But with this property, we will be able to introduce a caching system to avoid that buffering. Uh, great. So another thing that we're going to do is to set the initial volume of the track player. So let's go here and let's set set volume. And I'm going to set a uh, so this value must be, I think, between zero and one. So I don't want to uh, like the playback overlap with my voice. So I will set a very uh, low volume for now, which will be 0 0.0.3, which is not too loud. And then we're gonna also to set up the track player repeat mode state. And we are going to set is repeat mode to Q. So this part uh, will also be more clear later when we are going to set up the button for uh, changing this repeat mode. Uh, great. So let's go back inside our setup, um, setup track player and let's define a news effect. Inside this use effect, we're going to execute a function. And what we need to do here is, um, is going to run the function setup player that we define over here. So we're going to set up the player and then we are going to do something else when it finished since it's uh, an async function. So when the setup player is finished, actually we need to basically adding a new variable called is initialized, which will be equal to useRef set to false. And this will be super important to avoid re-executing this use effect uh, in case our application uh, reloads again. So here we will go over here and say is initialize dot current set it to true. And also we want to take an, uh, an input callback function called onload. And this onload will basically be just a plain function and we are going to execute it uh, here. Actually, this will be an optional uh, function. So we will go over here and we are going to execute the load if it is defined. Uh, great. Uh, in, case, in case of possible errors, we are going to take the error and we are going to say that is initialized.current will be set to false. So we will try to, in case we need to, we can try to uh, re-execute this use, eff uh, use effect again. 
and over here we are gonna also to console log the error also let's wrap this parenthesis great and over here we are going to pass this on load function uh great okay so this was it for our usetup truck player so we are gonna use this usetup truck player inside our application entry point which is actually the root layout.tsx uh, file so if you remember from before this was like the main uh, root component that gets executed by uh, expo or react native in this case so over here we are going to execute you setup track player so here now we need to pass the function on load what we want to execute on when the truck player is finished loading basically most of the user experience behavior is to show the splash screen when the application is loading internal assets such as uh, images or fonts or even setting up internal uh, system like in this case the react native truck player so what we are going to do is to use the is to first import the flash screen from expo router and we're gonna say out of the up entry point prevent auto async so this will basically show the splash screen until we are uh, going to call another function called hide async so over here we are going to we're going to declare a function called handle track player loaded and this will be a new callback function we need an, a new callback function over here because we don't want to trigger the use effect inside the use track player over and over again so let's go here and let's say that when the truck player is finished loading we are going to execute splash screen dot hide async so that means that when the truck players finish loading we are going to hide the splash screen and we're going to show the song screen great and now over here we can pass this function great okay let's try to refresh our application yeah it's still working great now we're going to define also another uh, useful uh, hook that will be, will come in handy for debugging our truck player state so let's go under the hooks folder and uh, let's create a new hook called use log truck player state great over here we are going to import some uh, types and um function from in this case from react native truck player and we're going to import the event and also the use truck player events so basically inside this hook we are going to log on the console the current state of the truck player so the events that we want to log are gonna be on a list of event the first one will be event dot playback state and then i'm gonna listen for the event dot playback error and also event dot um playback active track change it uh great so now let's define our hook so use log track player state and let's define the body so inside here we are gonna use the use track player uh, events we are gonna pass the events that we want to listen for and also an async function that will be basically this will be the callback function that will that is going to be executed every time a new event that we are listening for gets triggered so over here we're gonna say that if the event dot type is equal to event dot playback error we are gonna log console.log actually we are gonna use the console.warn and we're gonna say an error occurred while playing actually we're gonna say an error occurred uh semicolon occurred colon and then the event then we're gonna say if event dot type is gonna be event dot playback state we're gonna log console.log 
playback state colon and we're gonna render the event dot state great and finally we're gonna also have another if statement where we're gonna say that when the active track change it we're gonna console log the index of the active track change it great so now uh, if we go back here uh, let's try to refresh and actually is not anything is logged because the track player uh, I think it's not doing anything yet. So yeah, let's just uh, move on. Or actually, we have to add this um, hook inside the app entry point. So use log rock player state and let's execute it. Uh, great. So let's refresh. Let's open up our log and let's try to... Uh, actually, let's save this. And uh, let's refresh. And yeah, actually, I think that uh, this must come after the um, the setup function, otherwise it will not work. So let's refresh. Okay, seems to work fine. Even though sometimes we are gonna say, uh, see this error, the player has already been initialized via setup player, and this is something that could happen when you refresh your application with the fast refresh, but is something that you should really not worry about uh, unless you are obviously uh, trying to ship in production this application. Great. Okay, at this point, let's close these tabs and let's go back to our track list item. And if you recall from before, uh, we were basically uh, we mocked uh, this is active track was mocked by us uh, to uh, to set the value of false. Actually, React Native Track Player uh, export a an hook called use active track active track, which we can call, and we can access the URL of that uh, active track, and we can compare to the current uh, track item actually with the URL of the current track item. So if the two, uh, the active track and the currently rendered uh, track URL matches, that means that the track it is in an active state. And remember that this active track was used uh, by us inside the style of the uh, image that we're displaying and actually over here. Great. So, um, since we are inside the track list item, uh, we can also have the three uh, dots that get displayed over here and that will represent the option or the option man the shortcuts menu to add a library to a playlist or uh, removing or adding to the favorite songs. So let's go here and what we are going to do is to is to basically add um, an icon that will come from in typo and this in typo will come from a uh, react uh, from expo vector icons so over here we are going to set the name of the icon as dots three horizontal we're gonna set the sides to 18 and the color to be colors.icon. Great, let's save. And I think that we need to refresh, but it's actually not shown. Um, yeah, I think that we need to, the reason for that is that we need to wrap everything inside a parent view and take this stuff, this, uh, just inside this parent view. Okay, you can see that now they get displayed, but we want them to be displayed, you know, horizontally. So we can just go here and attaching this style. So the flex set to one, flex direction set to row, justify content space between and align item center. And you can see that now the three option menu gets rendered correctly. In a later stage of this video, we are going to implement the UI menu for the uh, shortcuts. Great, now we want to add 
a proper handler that needs to be executed every time we click on a, in one of these songs. So right now we are not doing anything because the touchable highlight uh, does not specify the on-press event handler. So what we are going to do inside the track list item props is define an, a callback function called on track select. And this function will take an input the track and will just return void. That way we can extract this on track select and basically execute it over here. So we can go here and just run. Actually, I'm going to rename this on track select to handle track select, right? And over here, we're gonna say handle track select and passing the current track. Uh, great. Now, what we need to do is going back to our tracks list and over here, we need to specify our handler. So here on track select, we are gonna take the, actually we are gonna go here and let's call this uh, callback function handle track select. This will take in input the track. And for now, we are gonna log the current uh, track like that. So we can pass this handle track select to the prop on track select. Uh, great. So you can see now that when I click on the um, track item, we get the touchable animation. But if we open up the, uh, the terminal, you can see that the track gets console log in the console. Great, great job. Okay, before we get forward and start playing uh, songs from our library, I'm going to also adding um, a new component called floating player. So the floating player basically is this component right here. And it's basically um, like, a minimized version of the track player that gets rendered just above the tab navigation. And the goal of this component will be displaying the currently active track and when it will get pressed, it will open up the real track player screen. So let's try to implement this component. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's close this tab and inside our component, let's define our floating player.tsx. So let's export our floating player. And this component will use different hooks. So the first hook that is going to use is the use active track to get access to the currently played track. So active track will be retrieved from use active track. Um, here we are gonna immediately add a if statement where we're gonna say that the, if we do not have any active track played in right now, we just return uh, null. That means that we should not display the floating player. Great. So now let's implement the renderer function. So basically the floating player will be a touchable opacity component. And inside here, we are gonna have a fragment because the touchable opacity uh, accepts only a single child. And inside here, we are gonna have the fast image component that we uh, used before. And we're going to specify the source property and we're gonna pass the URI as the, yeah, I'm going to define another utility variable called display track uh, to be the active track. Uh, this will come in handy later because if we do not have any active track, we might render the last active track uh, that was uh, rendered uh, before the current one. This will become 
useful to avoid some flickering issue that the floating player component might end up if we rely only on the hook use active track but we are going to implement it just before the renderer function so let's go here and let's say display track dot artwork and if we don't have any image we are going to display unknown track image great uh, then we are going to also define style and the styles will come from track artwork image so we need to define these styles over here so let's import the style sheet from react native and over here let's get this track artwork image so let's go here and paste it the track artwork just here so this will be basically the uh, small thumbnail of the image that is currently being played okay let's copy this out and let's use these styles here instead of style sheet great great so this was for um this was done for our fast image then we're gonna have a view let's import the view from react native and inside this view we're gonna have a text this text is going to display the display track dot title great let's import the text from react native text and that should be it i think that we need also a style which will be styles dot track title so let's go here and let's add the track title style let's import the default style so the track titles basically inherits all the property from the default styles.txt we set the font size to 18 font weight to 600 padding left to 10 uh great so let's go ahead and now let's add also a parent style to this view which will be styles dot track title container and this will be super important to avoid the track title uh, overlaps the other two uh, components of the floating player which are gonna be the play and the uh, skip to the next one button so let's go ahead so let's go inside the styles and let's add this track title container that will set the flex the flex to one overflow hidden and a margin left to 10. uh great uh finally we're gonna have also another view uh that is going to render two component the play play uh, or pause button or the skip to next button great actually we're gonna uh we're gonna need to implement these two components but i can say that they are gonna take a property called icon size that will be 24 for the play pause button and an icon size of 22 for the skip to next uh, to the next button also we are gonna also to add a styles to this parent view and this will be styles dot track controls container and this track controls container we are going to define it here so basically they will have a flex direction row a line item center and some gaps margin and some padding uh great so next step will be implementing these two component called play pause button and skip to next button so we're going to implement this component inside a single file called player controls dot tsx great inside this file we are gonna first define a type called player controls props and we are gonna take an optional style that will come from the view style great also we're gonna define a second type called player button props uh which also is gonna take a style which will be the view styles and also the icon sides which will be a number great so now what we are going to do is to first implement our um, play or pose 
button and this will basically take all the player button player button props so from here we're gonna extract the style and the icon sides so this component needs to know if the the track player is playing a song or is currently paused so for doing that react native track player export a very useful hook called use is playing and this will tell us if the current track player is playing a song or actually even if it's buffering during playing but we will need only the playing state here so here we're going to return a view from react native and inside here we are gonna have a touchable opacity and inside the touchable opacity we are gonna have a, the, a font awesome icon so let's import this font awesome from um, expo vector icons and this icon will be conditionally rendered and we're gonna say that if it's playing we're going to render the pause button otherwise we're gonna render the play button besides actually here we need font awesome okay the sides will be the icon sides and also the color will be colors dot text great uh also we're gonna add some styling to this touchable opacity for example we're gonna set an active opacity at 0 0.85 and actually we are going to set an unpress function and if a track is current play we are going to execute the track player dot uh, pause function otherwise we are going to execute the track player dot play function and these are both a uh, function that comes directly from the track player and as you might have understand this will pause the current track and this will play or resume the current track great finally we are gonna also add a style to this parent uh, container so we are gonna set an height set to the icon sides and also we are gonna pass the parent style great so that was it for our play pause button so if you go back here we should be able to implement um, port this component actually i like to use the the path aliases to have inner code and yeah so let's try uh, let's go ahead and let's implement the escape to next button so let's go just uh, below the play post button definition and let's define the skip to next button so this will be also use the player button props and this will basically extract the style actually not the style but the icon sides and we're gonna set a default to 30. over here we are going to return um, touchable opacity component and inside this touchable opacity component we are going to use an icon um, we are going to render an icon which will come from font awesome 6 so let's go here and let's extract font awesome 6 this icon will be named as forward we'll have a sides of icon sides and we'll also have a color of colors dot text are oh, great also we need to define some property for the touchable opacity for example the active opacity will be 0 0.7 and on press we are going to execute something in this case uh, what we are going to execute will be track player dot skip to next uh actually we need to uh, wrap this in a, inside a function and execute it like that so you can see how powerful it is the track player 
library. It offers this super simple uh, API to just uh, control our track player. Great. Since we are here, we can also implement the skip to the previous button and which is basically similar to the skip to the next button. So I will just copy it here. So uh, we are just taking the icon sides. Uh, we are just, as we did for the skip to next button, define attachable opacity, define the off, uh, font awesome six uh, with uh, the icon name set to backward. Actually here, what we can do is to paste this here and just create an inline function as we did for the skip to next button. Uh, great. Okay, then now we can go back to the floating player and we can just import this one. Great. So we should not have any other error. So now what we want to do is to display this floating player uh, somehow over these tabs. Uh, but actually the problem is that since we are not able to start a song, anything will uh, be um, displayed. So what we can do here is adding a mocking track that we are going to remove it uh, later. So we know that this must be a track. So we can go here and say the title is, this is just a song and and we are not going to define anything else just a track with a simple title okay now you might be wondering how we are going to display this floating player what we know is that the floating player must persist between our tabs navigation so we we don't want the floating player be remounted every time we change screen so in order to do that what we can do is go inside our app folder inside the tabs group folder open up the layout and as you might remember here we define all the screen inside the tabs navigation so what we can do now is wrapping everything inside a fragment so let's take just all of this content and paste it inside this fragment and just um, below the navigation, we are going to define our floating player. Great. Uh, we can also add some style, uh, which should we are not taking. So let's go here and let's uh, add these props, view props that will come from uh, React Native. So now we should be able to get this style prop. And over here, we are going to define the position set to absolute, uh, left set to eight, right set to eight, and bottom uh, will actually be will be seventy eight, just to like distantiate from the current bottom tab, uh, bottom bar navigation. Great. Let's hit save, and let's see what is going to happen. So it seems that nothing is being displayed. Let's try to refresh and still nothing is displayed. So let's try to figure out why. Okay, the problem is that if we go back inside our floating player, we are saying that if the active track is uh, basically null, we are not going to render anything, but we actually have to check the, the currently uh, displayed track. So, um, so this way we're gonna check the display track. So now if we hit save, we should have something. So you can see that we get the results. We have something, but it's not correct. We can see that we have the, like the image displayed, but the container is appearing a sort of white. So let's go back to the floating player and actually we are missing some styling over this touchable opacity which is the container that is wrapping our floating player so here we are going to set the active opacity to 0 0.9 
and we are also going to set a style which is going to be um styles dot container and also and also the parent style great so let's go here and let's define our container style so the container style will have a flex direction set to row align item set to center and we're gonna have a background color set to like a very soft gray variant we will have some padding set to height a border radius set to 12 and finally a padding vertical set to 10. okay let's see and it's working just fine you can see how our mocked song is displayed correctly and here we have the play or pause button and here we have the skip to next button so great great job so at this point we are able to just start playing our song from our library so in order to do that we need to instruct the react native track player to play the songs that we tap over this list uh, over here so how we are going to do that we are going to move inside the track list component and over here if you remember from before we had this callback function called handle track select so basically here what we are going to do is to make this application an async function and over here we are going to have a track player dot load dot track so basically what this function will do will basically load the current track as the the only track that the player must be play so what we're uh, is going to happen that every time we click on a we press on a song we are going to play that song but we are not be able to skip to the next or previous songs because we still don't have a way to managing a queue of song but just for testing let's try this out so let's go over here and let's try to play a song for example let's select this one okay you can see that anything is happening because it seems like track is stopped but if we press the play button it should work as expected and it's working i don't know if it's hearable so in this case i'm going to do i'm going to go inside the use setup track player and i'm going to set this to 0 0.5 so it should be uh, hearable that way so let's just go here select this song and select play awesome our track player is working just fine actually if we want to avoid that issue we can just go here and add an await track player dot play so that way we will first load the truck and then play it immediately. So let's try it again. Let's try this time with another song, for example, this one. And it's working just fine. Great, great job. A thing that I want you to notice is that if we try to switch between different songs the floating player might be a little bit flickering let's see what i mean by that so let's select different songs and basically okay now it's not super it's not super visible but it can happen that if we are fast enough to change track this floating player might flicker there is a little trick to avoid that and it is 
by caching the last active track. So what I'm going to do now is going back to our floating player and over here we are going to define last active track. And this will come from use last active track. So obviously we need to implement this hook. So let's go implement it. So let's go here inside the hooks folder and let's create this hook use last active track dot sx. So let's define our export function use last active track. And here what we are going to do is to take the currently active track. So use active track which will come from React Native Track Player. And also we are going to make use of an uh, use state to keep track of the, the last active track. So set last active track. And here we are gonna use an uh, use state with type track. And let's import this from React Native Track Player. So everything we need to do here is adding a news effect like that and basically we are going to save the last active track to be the active track so and this will run basically every time the active track change so what will happen is that every time the active track change the last active track will be updating uh, accordingly but you might be wondering, wait, so what is the real uh, utility of last active track if it is the same of active track? Well, the trick will come here because we are going to say if not active track, we are going to return. So what this means that uh, every time the track change, if we transition in a state where the active track is undefined, we still have the active drive set to the previously active track. And this is super very important because sometimes while transitioning between screen or sometimes tracks, the active track can become undefined. And with this type guard, we are gonna be able to always have a valid track inside it. Oh, great, so at this point, we just have to return this last active track save it and make use this use last, last active track over here. So at this point, we can just remove this and say that the display track will be the, uh, the active track. And if the active track is not defined, we are going to display the last active track. Great. Uh, at this point, I think that we can remove also this. And you can see that TypeScript infrared correctly this type to be track or undefined. And you might be wondering why it is undefined if we have the last active track. Well, the reason is that when we first load the application, we don't have any active track or last active track because the application has just started. So if we try to reload the application, actually there is something is off. I think that we need to refresh and restart. You can see that nothing is played because you know, the application just started, we do not have any kind of state set yet. So yeah, this will be super useful to increase our user experience and avoid flickering between transitioning between different songs or screen. Another thing that I would like to add is if we go back to our tracks uh, list, you can see that if we search for a song that doesn't exist, nothing gets displayed. So in that case, what we are going to do is to add a list empty component, which will render a component when the list of tracks is empty. So here we're gonna use a view from React Native. And inside this view, we are gonna display a text that will say no songs found and we need to import this text from React Native, so over here. And also here, we can use the slash components, great. And yeah, so 
we are going to set the style that is going to be uh, will come from util styles empty component uh, text actually we need to define this util styles and basically will be just this one we're going to use the default style text uh, set the color to text muted uh, set the text alignment to center and a margin top to 20. so now we can just do empty content text and you can see that the no songs found is getting displayed uh, actually we can just do a uh, better and if we go back to our track list along with this no songs found we can also add an image that we are going to import from fast image and we're going to display uh, the unknown track image uri so over here we also have to define these styles inside the util styles and just paste this style over here which is called empty content image that will have a width of 200 height of 200 align self align self center and a margin top of 40. so let's save and you can see that we have now this nice looking uh, list empty component display when we search for a song that doesn't exist. Great. Okay, great. At this point, what I'm going to do is going back to the use setup player and just lower this value down. Otherwise, the songs will be too loud and can overlap my voice. So let's try this out. Okay, it's still hearable, but should not overlap my voice. Okay, at this point, you can see that when we have an active track, like for example, uh, this one, we get some hint that that is the active track. So for example, the title becomes uh, red, the image becomes slightly more uh, darker, but if you played around with uh, most of the music player application, they also show some kind of animated uh, loaders. And what we are going to do now is implementing that animation. So let's close these tabs. And let's head into the component track list item. So if you remember here, we were checking if the current track is the active track. And so from here, for adding the animation that we were uh, talking before, we're gonna add a third party library called React Native Loader Kit. So React Native Loader Kit is just a library for adding loader animation. So let's take a look at the preview on GitHub. So as you can see, we will be able to access most of this animation. And for example, we are going to use uh, this one or this one to uh, animate our track artwork image when a track is loading. Great. Okay, so let's dismiss this window and let's go here and let's clear the console and let's run npx expo install react native loader kit great so let's stop our application and let's try run it again Great, our application has just relaunched correctly and it seems to work fine. So at this point, we can just start adding our animation. So inside our track list item, we're gonna add some new features. So let's scroll down under the, let's go where we define our first image. And here we are gonna have some conditional rendering. So we are going to say that if this is the active track and if the current track is playing, actually for retrieving the state, we are going to need another 
uh, hook that we used before and it is uses plane for react native truck player so let's go here and let's extract playing great so if it is the active truck and is playing we are going to render loader an icon from loader kit so let's import our loader kit from react native loader kit great let's go back here and let's set name to line tail party great and also set the color to colors dot icon if the truck is not playing we are going to actually display another icon but this time it will come from ionicons so let's import ionicons from vector icons so here ionicons great so we're gonna use name the icon play we're gonna set the size to 24 and we're gonna set the color to colors dot icon awesome um at the same time you can see that we actually have a result but it's not super correct i think that we need to wrap all of this inside a parenthesis so okay now it looks fine and we need also to have a specific style which is going to be named styles dot track playing icon indicator and this style will be applied also for this icon right here so let's go here inside the style and let's define our track playing icon indicator and we are gonna set these values right here we're gonna set the position to absolute the top set to 10 left set to 16 width to 16 and also night set to 16 and that should be it uh, this way the icon will be placed relatively to this uh, image and basically will be centered uh, over like display on top of the image so let's take a look at the result okay you can see that actually we don't have the result but this is actually because we uh, this conditional rendering is displayed only when we have an active track so for example let's go here and let's try to select this song okay you can see that we have our cool animation playing actually i think it's a little bit higher so let's stop this song and yeah definitely there is something that is off because now we should have a play button but it seems like it is cut off so let's try to figure out why okay i think that we need to increase the top value to 18 but still it's not correct so the issue that we are encountering right now is because we are actually using the same style for both of the um, icons so for the play indicator and the pose indicator actually we want different styles so let's go and implement the different style so let's go back here this is the track playing indicator which should have a top set to 18 and we are going to have also another property, another style, which will be the track pose indicator, which will still be absolutely positioned, but we'll have a top of 14 and a left of 14. So let's go here and, and let's set the track pose indicator to the ionic on Saigon. Great, great job. You can see that now is displayed correctly. Now you can see that every time I play the song, the animation is displayed correctly. And when it gets stopped, it also display the play icon. Uh, great, great job. So the next thing that I want to implement is a very cool feature of our music player, and it is the moving title animation so what do i mean by that so what is the moving title animation so if you play around with uh, 
Apple Music app or Spotify, you might have noticed that track titles that has a very long title gets animated by being translated from the right to the left, uh, back and forth. So let's take a look at an example. Let's go inside the floating player and let's say that instead of displaying the current track title, I'm going to display a very long name, for example, a very long string like that. And you can see that this is not actually the behavior that we want. So what we want here is like a text that is single line and that will move, as I was saying before, uh, back and forth in order to display the entire title text. So for achieving uh, this feature, we're going to extract a new component that is going to be named moving text. So let's define our component moving uh, text. So since this component is an animated component, we are going to need a um, library for handling animation. And the best library for ending animation in React Native is called React Native Reanimated. So let's go here and let's install React Native Reanimated. So React Native Reanimated. Great. While this package is installing, let's let's start by defining the props of our uh, moving text. So let's call it moving text props. And this will take an input the text that needs to be displayed and it will be a string. And then we are gonna need an animation threshold that will be clear. It will be clear soon. So let's see what is happening. Seems that our application uh, keeps refreshing it. So let's uh, refresh uh, one last time, okay. Uh, it seems that something have broke, so okay. Let's try to uh, rerun it from scratch. So npx expo run ios, and let's uh, close it. So while it's restarting, let's complete our moving text prop. So here we are gonna get an animation threshold and also a style prop that will come from style props and these style props will come from uh, react native reanimated so from here i'm gonna get style uh, props awesome so let's see actually our application is recompiling from scratch because we install reanimated and I think that must be recompiled from completely from scratch. So yeah, let's wait to be reloaded. Okay, and it's working just fine. Awesome. So here we are going to take in input this moving text props. And from here, we're going to extract text, animation threshold and the style. Uh, great. So let's start by defining our component. We are going to use the animated from React Native Reanimated dot text, and inside here we are going to display our text. Great. Obviously, the number of lines that we want to display will be just a single line. We don't want the title of our track to wrap in multiple lines. And here, uh, we're gonna also define some styling. So we're gonna pass the parent style, an animated style, and also a conditional animation that we're gonna pass it later, actually. So let's define our animated style. So basically, the animation of this uh, component uh, will happen in the will consist of translating our component on the X axis. So we are going to define a property called translate X, and this will be equal to use shared value, and initial value will be zero. 
great then we are gonna also define a variable called should animate and here we are gonna check the length of the current text and if it is greater or equal than the animation threshold then we should apply the animation otherwise we just display the text as it is this is logic because uh, if the text is super short we don't need it to animate it back and forth to display the complete title of the track so it makes sense to have this should animate great so we also gonna have another variable called text width and it's going to be equal to text length times three great we can also to define an animated style uh, which is going to be equal to use animated uh, style and we're gonna pass a function over here where we're going to return a transform property which will be equal to translate x equal to translate x dot value actually i just make a typo should have an object here like that so perfect at this point we have to also add a news effect to make this animation happening so let's add this use effect and let's add the dependency array empty for now and here what we're going to do is if not should animate uh, we're going to just return otherwise we are going to update our translate x dot value and this will gonna be equal to some different animation option that will be applied one of each other for example we want this animation to have for example a delay so we are gonna use with delay from react native reanimated and the delay will be one second so inside the with delay we are going to also pass another kind of animation and this other animation will be with repeat so with repeat means that our animation should animate back and forth forever so we are gonna just pass null here and we are gonna pass uh, the second value will be the number of repetition if we set min minus one it means that the animation goes forever and then the third property is to if we want to reverse the animation so if we go from left to right the the other animation will go from right to left so we are gonna set it to true also so inside the first parameter we actually we have to specify a third animation which is the width timing and here we are gonna pass minus text uh, with to and this is to tell uh, this animation from going from left to right initially and the second option will be the duration of this animation will be actually five seconds which are 5000 milliseconds and finally an easing function set to uh, easing dot linear uh, great let's hit save and that should be uh, correct now so let's check that easing is actually yeah easing should come from react native reanimated and not from react native so here easing okay make sure that all the imports comes from react native reanimated and not react native otherwise something's called broke over time uh, great so here you can see that uh, we must define some dependencies to have these use effects works correctly so here we have to define the translate x the text the animation threshold and the should animate and the text with uh, great so our animation should be uh, actually is not ready because we have to define also a cleanup function that must be executed when the moving text gets unmounted. In this case, we are going to execute the cancel animation and passing the translate x to stop the animation and also the translate x dot value set to zero to reset 
the animation when it gets unmounted. Awesome. That should be it. And I think that uh, we are almost ready. I think that we need also another property here where we are gonna say that if we should animate, we are gonna also apply a width of 999. And this is for basically uh, preventing the ellipses uh, from uh, appearing. So basically, uh, if we don't, do not set this width, basically our text will be like cut it with some ellipses at the tail of the text. But to prevent that, we set a um, very long width that should prevent those ellipses from appearing. Also, we are gonna set a padding left set to 16. And this is for basically uh, avoid the initial characters being barely uh, visible because this animation, when when start animating, could basically uh, tend to cut the initial uh, characters of our text, but by adding some padding left, we should avoid uh, this issue. Okay, I think that our component is ready to be used. So let's go inside the floating player, and instead of using this text style, we are going to use the moving text. Also here, let's copy and paste it here. Great, I think that we need to pass also the uh, text. As text, we are going to pass this one just to test it out. Obviously, we are gonna, uh, we are not going to have any children because the text will be passed as a prop. And finally, we need an animation threshold set to 25 characters. Great, so let's try this moving text component. Now I'm going to uh, select these songs, for example, and you can see that our animation is looking absolutely fine. Now let's try to pass the real title. So we are gonna say here display track dot title, or in case it's not defined, we're gonna pass the empty string. Okay, it seems, okay, you can see that now is not animating because the title is short enough to not triggering the animation. But let's say, for example, that I want to place this song and you can see how we are getting this smooth animation uh, back and forth that will permit us to display uh, the, entire, uh, the entire title of the tracks. Awesome. Okay, also I just noticed that our play icon is not the one that I was really looking for. So let's open up the player controls and you can see that here as the icon being rendered, you are using uh, Font Awesome instead of Font Awesome 6. So let's go here and set Font Awesome 6. Great, as you can see now it's way more uh, smooth, awesome. Great, so now it's time to implement one of the most important screen for our application. And this screen is the player screen. So the player screen is actually um, a little bit, is not super straightforward since it has many um, inner components, many subtle uh, effects that, that needs to be implemented. So let's try to break it down. So we have multiple things going on in the screen. For example, we have the title of the track, the artist name, a button for uh, checking or uh, for toggling the tracks as favorite or unfavorite. Also a progress bar uh, that permits us to, uh, it will act as a slider and we'll like, and we are gonna be able to seek to a specific time of the track as long as the current progress and the total remaining duration. Uh, we have three main button, one for uh, playing or pausing the track, uh, skipping to the uh, next uh, track or to the previous one, we have a slider for controlling the track uh, player volume 
And finally, we are gonna have a button for toggling the state of track player repeat mode. And also the main, uh, the largest components will be the track artwork uh, image. Uh, also, you can see that the background has some kind of fancy effect because it looks like a linear gradient and also it will compute at runtime the background color uh, by extracting the, pr the primary and the prominent colors from the current artwork image. So we have a lot of work to do to implement this screen, so let's get started. Okay, we are going to implement this component not as a, like as a separate component, but directly as a screen. So what I mean by that is that uh, we are going to implement this, this player screen and directly under the app uh, folder. So let's go here and let's type player.tsx. And this component basically will uh, act as a, a stack screen, which will have a card animation transitioning uh, effect. So let's start implementing this uh, player screen. So let's define player screen uh, to be a React component. And as always, let's export. Let's export as the default export. Uh, great. So we're gonna have a parent view and this parent view will have uh, a style. Uh, actually, let's import this view from React Native and this will have a style uh, called styles.overlayContainer. So let's define our styles here. Let's import um, the style sheet from React Native. And this overlay container basically will have the style. So we're going to import the default styles. Uh, so it's basically a default style container. And, but at the same time, we are, we are applying some horizontal padding and we're setting a background color of basically bl a black background color with an opacity of 0.5. Great. So here we can just use these styles and define it just right uh, here. Great. So the second component will be uh, this miss player symbol. Actually, symbol like that. And let's go into implement this component in line here. So this miss player symbol equal to a new React component, and this will basically use the use safe area insets and will extract the top value. And from here, we are going to return a view uh, display with this style. Uh, position will be absolute, uh, the top will be um, the top from the safe area inset plus eight, and also left will be zero, uh, right will be zero, flex direction will be set to row, and finally justify content will be set to center. And inside here we'll have the symbol uh, itself. So uh, this actually can be a um, self-enclosing tag will have the accessible uh, properties set to uh, false because this is not actually a container. It's just um, like um, it's just acting as a symbol. So the style for this symbol will be a weight of uh, 50, 8 of 8, uh, border radius set to 8, then a background color Actually, let me scroll down. Background color set to surely this will be white. So FFF and an opacity of 0 0.7. Uh, great. So this was that was it for our display dismiss player symbol. Uh, actually, 
we want to just try and playing around this uh, player screen. So how are we gonna do that? So we are gonna open the uh, root layout file and over here after the top screen, we are gonna have a new stock dot screen. And this will have name layer to just look up for this file right here. And we're gonna set also some options. We're gonna set the presentation set to a uh, card. We're gonna set the gesture enabled set to true. The gesture direction set to a uh, vertical and also animation duration set to uh, 400 and also header shown set to false. Awesome. Uh, now, we want um, to provide a way to show up this screen right here. And we are going to do this by using uh, the router from Expo Router. And um, more precisely, we are going to open this screen when we are going to tap over the floating player. So what we are going to do is to open up the floating player and here we are going to access the router. So const router equals use uh, router from Expo Router. And basically uh, this uh, inside this touchable opacity, we are going to specify an unpressed function. And this will be handle press. And this handle press will be defined here. And basically what we need to do um, is just use the router dot uh, navigate and and over here we're gonna say slash player uh great so at this point if we try to press on the floating player it should open up our floating player and it's actually working you can see that we get this night nice smooth uh, animation coming from bottom to towards the top let's see again Yep, it's working just fine. And here, here it is, our dismiss player uh, symbol. Great. Awesome. So let's go back to our uh, player uh, screen. So uh, let's add also uh, other components. Obviously, we need to get access to the currently uh, active track. So let's define active track to be use active track from React Native player. And from here, we are gonna say that if the the current track, if we do not have an active track, we are going to return an activity uh, indicator because it is possible that that track is uh, loading, so uh, it might not be just defined yet. So uh, let's define a uh, activity indicator and this will have the colors to set to colors.icon and this view this parent view will have a style equal to will be equal to default styles.container and we're gonna also set um, justify content center to have our activity indicator set to um, on the center of the screen. Uh, great. So this was in case the active track is not defined. But in case it's defined, I think that we want to display something. So we uh, after the dismiss player symbol, so after below the dismiss player symbol, we are gonna have a new parent view. This parent view will have a style uh, to be equal to flex set to one. Uh, margin top margin top set to top plus uh, 17 uh, this top will come from the use safe area insets so here we're gonna start top and also we're gonna use also bottom uh, so margin top was uh, tops plus 70 and also we're gonna have a margin bottom set to bottom great so that was it for our parent uh, container. Uh, now we're gonna have another view. Uh, this uh, view will contain our 
track artwork image. So here we are gonna have our fast image component. And as always, we're gonna have the source prop. The URI will be, let me scroll down. Um, it's gonna be the active track dot artwork image or otherwise it's going to be unknown uh, track image URI. Great. I'm gonna set also a priority and that will be fast image dot priority. Actually priority. And here we can set high because it will be the only image uh, display on the screen. Uh, great. Uh, I think that we can also set the reside mode set to cover and also we're gonna have a style set to styles dot artwork uh, image and also over here uh, we're gonna have also a style which will be uh, styles uh, dot artwork image container great let's define these two styles so let's go here and uh, let's define first the artwork image uh, container that I'm going to paste here basically we are setting some shadows over here and then setting flex direction to row justify content center and the height of the image container set to 45% of the screen so basically uh, oops so basically until here great and also we're gonna need uh, the artwork uh, image style itself that is going to be placed here so uh, basically, we are setting width and height to be 100% because obviously we are relative to this parent container. Resides mode set to cover and a border radius, border radius set to 12. Uh, great. So you can see that um, our image uh, is being, uh, our unknown track uh, is being displayed correctly. And you can see also that we have some uh, shadow over here that helps emphasize the the track image over the background. Awesome. Great. So let's go ahead and let's add some new content. Okay. So now we're going to have another view to wrap our uh, track information. So this parent view will have a style of flex one. Uh, actually, we need to wrap it inside an object like that. Okay. Great. Uh, we will also have another view. Uh, this view will have a, a margin top set to auto. Great. And then we're unfortunately this component is a little bit tricky. Uh, it will have many view nested uh, in order to achieve the result that we are aiming for. But the result will be awesome, I can assure you. So let's go here and set the style to have the height to 60. Great. So uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so basically this one will be the track title row and we're gonna set a fixed height uh so inside here uh okay actually let me remove this comment because it might be um misleading we're gonna have another view and inside this view we're gonna set the flex direction uh set to row then we're gonna have justify content set to uh space uh between then we are gonna also have align items uh, set to center. Great. Okay, so what will be the content of this inner view? So here we're gonna have the track, gonna have the track title. So we're gonna use the moving text here, actually not like that. And we're gonna pass the text to be uh, to be actually the track. Oops. Making mistake track dot tie the active track dot title or an empty string. Uh, the animation threshold will be set to thirty, and then we also have a style to be styles dot uh, track title track title text uh, that way. And also we're gonna wrap this stuff with the parent view. So let's move this here. 
Uh, let's move also this over here. And this parent view uh, will be, will have also style, which will be equal to styles.artwork. Sorry, uh, styles.track title container. Uh, great, but we need to define uh, these two styles. So uh, let's go ahead and let's define and let's define these two missing styles. Uh, so the track title container basically will have flex one and overflow hidden, while the track title text will have the default styles.txt with a font size of 22 and the font weight set to 700. Okay, so we get some result. Awesome. Uh, great, let's go ahead and uh, let's have the, basically the favorite uh, button icon and here we are gonna use the font awesome um, icon and we are gonna use actually a dynamic icon where we're gonna say that if it's favorite uh, we are going to display um, we are going to display an art otherwise we are going to display an art dash o uh, great. So actually, we don't have this favorite. So for now, I'm gonna say that is favorite is false. Uh, later, we are going to implement like we are going to uh, retrieve a way to understand if the current track has been favorite by the user or not. Awesome. So we're gonna set also a size set to twenty, and we're gonna add a color. Uh, set if it's favorite is going to be uh, colors dot primary otherwise will be colors dot uh, icon great and also we're gonna set the style to be margin horizontal set to 14 and then we are gonna have also an unpress function uh, which is going to be named toggle favorite that for now, I'm going to define here toggle favorite, favorite, and will be basically an empty function for now. Uh, great. Uh, okay, you can see that our icon is over here, and our button icon, and you can see that it wraps nicely with the title uh, without uh, overlapping one each other. Awesome. Okay. Uh, next step will be adding after the button. I think that outside this view, we are gonna have the track artist plus the actually uh, the album, but I don't think that we don't have any album, so only the track uh, artist. Uh, so uh, what we are going to do here is gonna say uh, if track dot active track dot artist is defined we're gonna have a text component from react native this text will be the active track dot i think it's artist yeah and the number of lines will be one and uh, um, we're gonna have also style which is going to be styles dot track artists artist text and also a margin top set to 60 uh, so to 6 sorry um great uh okay let's define this track artist uh text uh let's go inside our styles uh, and then let's define the track artist text like here let's import the tokens so we are using the default style text, font size space, opacity 0.8 and max width set to 90%. And you can see uh, the uh, art is displayed over here. Awesome. Okay. okay. At this point, we are going to have two new components, which is going to be the player progress bar like that with the style of uh, margin top that to 32 and then we're gonna have the player controls which are gonna have a style with a margin top 
set to uh, 40. And after this view, we are gonna have a player, player volume bar like that. And this will also have a style of margin top, actually margin, margin that to auto, and also margin bottom that to 30. A uh, great. And finally, we are gonna have under the player volume bar, we're gonna have a view. And inside this view, we're gonna have the player repeat toggle uh, control with a size of 30 and a style of uh, margin bottom set to uh, 6. Okay, uh, finally, this wrapper container. We'll have uh, utils, actually not like that, utils, oops, utils, styles, dot, centered, uh, red row. Uh, let's add this centered row, uh, actually, yeah, let's define this centered row here. So let me go here and add the centered row util style. And yeah, I think that we are good to go. So obviously it crashed because we have not defined all of this component. So let's go ahead and define this component. Okay, so let's move inside the player controls. And so what we have to do now is defining, we basically have to, create this sort of slider progress bar over here and also here. But in order to implement a slider component, we are gonna import uh, some third party libraries that will make our life easier. So let's close this image and let's open up the terminal. Okay, let's close this. Uh, application, let's clear it out. Okay, so the first package that we need to install is npx expo install is react native uh, gesture handler. So the react native gesture handler is a library for managing gesture in react native. Then we are gonna have to install uh, react native awesome uh, slider will be like that, I hope. So React Native Awesome Slider uh, provides very cool slider that we're gonna use to implement our progress bar and volume bar. Then we're gonna need also React Native Image Colors. Uh, this library will be useful for creating the background effect that we have seen in our track player screen. And finally, to have that um, linear gradient effect, we are going we are going to install uh, Expo linear gradient. Actually, I think I misspelled. Yeah, Expo linear gradient component. Awesome. And there is actually a last library called TS yes Pattern, and it is for uh, handling pattern matching in a very modern way. So let's go here, uh, let's run yarn add ES pattern. Great. After having installed all of that library, we are going to uh, run a pre-build um, of the iOS native directory. Okay, the pre-build is finished. I'm not sure if we have to run a clean pre-build. I'm going to try to uh, run the application and if something's not working, we're gonna run a clean pre-build. So let's go here and let's run npx expo run iOS. Okay, great. It seems that it worked. Uh, our application seems to work just fine without any error. So. Uh, what we're going to do now is open up our uh, layout.tsx, our root layout, actually. And what we, 
what we need to do is to after the safe area provider adding the gesture handler uh, root view and we need to wrap both the root navigation and the status bar also we are going to set the style to uh, flex one otherwise it will not uh, work okay great so now we can just go back and implementing this component over here so we say that we were having this component inside the player controls so so let's go here and let's define player uh, controls and let's take this style here we're gonna take the player controls props and here we're going to return a view uh, this view will have also another view inside and here we're gonna use the skip to previous button then we're gonna have the play close button and then we are going to have the skip to um, the next button. Uh, great, let's save. And then let's go here and let's define a style, which is going to be equal to styles.container. And also the style that we pass from the parent uh, prop. So here we have to paste this. Awesome. And over here, we are going to have a style which is going to be equals to styles styles actually uh, does not work i don't know why and so let's define this container and row let's go here and let's type react native uh, style sheet and we need to import him from react native style sheet uh, great so let's go here and pasting these two uh, styles. So the container will just have the width set to 100 and the styles.row will have the flex direction, flex direction row, justify content space evenly and align items set to uh, centered. Uh, awesome. And that was it for our player control. Uh, if we go back to our player, now we can import this. And actually, uh, now we need to implement the player progress bar, the player volume bar, and the player repeat toggle. So let's start with the player progress bar. Okay, so let's go here inside the component and let's create a new file called player progress bar.tsx. Here we're going to define our React component, player progress bar. Uh, okay, not like that. We're gonna do style. Here we're gonna take view props okay so okay so here we're going to return a parent view and this parent view will take uh this style from this parent style we need to import this view over here and now we can use the slider component that comes from react native awesome slider so let's import it and here we need to uh, define multiple props. So the first props will be the progress props. So the progress will actually uh, came from a book called use uh, progress. And this use progress will basically call for track progress for the given interval. And this interval will be 250, um, 250 milliseconds so basically it will pull the current track progress in order to uh, see how much it does uh, progress so from this hook we can extract the duration so the duration of the prog of the track and also the current uh, progress that uh, over here is called position okay at this point since uh, this slider component use React Native reanimated under the hood, we have to specify some value, some uh, variables using the React Native reanimated use shared value. So uh, here we're gonna say is sliding is going to be equal to use shared value and is going to be false. 
uh, this will tell th this component if the user is uh, sliding along the, the progress bar or not. Then we have the progress and this will be use sharpet value and initially will be zero. Then we have the mean value, which will be use sharpet value and this will be also zero and also a max value. And this will be also uh, zero. This will come in handy soon when we are going to tweak the option of this slider uh, component. Another important variable that we need to declare is the track elapsed uh, time. And this will be equal to format uh, seconds to minute of the current position and const uh, track remaining time of format seconds to minute of duration minus current position. So these two variable basically are the variable that we see right here. This is the track elapsed time and this is the track remaining time. So when the track will progress over time, this will diminish and this will increase, very similar to uh, music track player uh, works normally. Uh, great. So uh, we need to define this format seconds to minute function and, and we're going to uh, create under the helpers folder a file called miscellaneous.js uh, and inside this uh, file we are going to paste this uh, format seconds to a minute. Uh, I'm not going to stop explain how this function works. It basically takes in input the number of seconds and it formats in uh, minutes like uh, we see in the previous screenshot that we have seen before. So as always, you have the access to my GitHub repository. So go there and check it out. Great. So now we should, uh, we can import this uh, function. So import uh, from um, actually helpers slash miscellaneous. And from here we should have format seconds to a minute. So actually we can go here and replace these two. Great. Okay, great. So uh, actually here we have also a um, condition where we say if sliding dot value is false, uh, we're going to update the progress dot value to be equal to if the duration is greater than zero, we're going to do position divided by duration. Otherwise, we're going to set zero. So basically, this is uh, a simple way to calculate how much the track has progress over time and it is done by dividing the current position by the duration but um, yeah we're going to calculate only if we are not sliding otherwise we might encounter some uh, weird error so inside the slider we can now define the progress like that and also many other options for example the minimum value will be the mean and the maximum value will be the max. So the mean will be zero and actually the max will be one and not zero. Okay, great. Then what do we have? Actually, we have a team property. Here we're going to specify the maximum tracking color and this will come from color. Let's import these colors from maximum reacting colors and also a minimum track in colors that will be equals to colors minimum tr attracting colors uh define the comma uh great also we have a uh, container styles which will be equal to detail styles dot uh container uh which actually we don't have defined so let's go here sorry actually this is slider and let's go here and let's define the slider to have an eight of seven and a border rate of radius of 16. Uh, great, let's close this and actually uh, let's save this and let's go ahead and also let's set the thumb width set to zero. Also render bubble that 
to null. So and um, basically we are hiding the render bubble. What do we get also? Uh, we're gonna have also a non-sliding start. This will be equal to um, is sliding dot value is gonna be true. So when we start sliding, we are gonna set this is sliding value to true. And then we are gonna have uh, also, actually let me just paste this just above the team, just below the team. Then we're gonna have on uh, value change. And here we're going to specify an async function with the value. And here we are gonna do a wait back player um, dot seek to value times duration. Great. So basically every time we slide and we stop to a specific uh, position, uh, we are gonna use the uh, seek operation provided by the track player. Awesome. We are gonna also have this func this callback function or this event handler called on sliding complete. So on sliding complete actually is it will be an async function that will uh, receive a value. And inside the body, what we are going to do is doing this. If not is sliding dot value just return. And so that means that if the user is not sliding, uh, we should not update the the current uh, position. Uh, then uh, if it's sliding, we're gonna set is sliding set value to false because we are actually have finished sliding. And also uh, let's call the track player oops track player dot uh seek to value times duration so basically when we finish sliding we basically seek to the where we uh end up sliding awesome i think that that is the majority of what we need actually we need also to add another view to basically show the track elapsed time and the track remaining time. So here we're gonna have a text where we render the track elapsed time. This text will come from React Native API. So here, great. And the style will be equal to uh, styles dot time time text. Actually, we have to define the style. So let me go here, let me add style sheet and let me add the time text. Here we need to import some styling on site. So the time text is basically, we are applying some default style text, uh, color, font size, and etc. And also we're gonna have another style called uh, time row, where we set the flex direction row, justify content space between and the light item set to baseline. Uh, Great, so this will become uh, styles. And also here, we're gonna set the style to be equal to styles.time row. Uh, great, and finally, we will have another text uh, where we are going to basically display this. So we're going to display the track remaining time uh, prefix by a dash. And also here, we're gonna set these styles to be time text. All right, so that was a huge component to build, but we should be fine. And yeah, the next component, I think that will be one similar component and it will be called the player uh, volume bar dot sx. So let's export on player volume bar this will be basically equal to. Okay, so this component, as we did before, we'll take some view props from React Native and it will have, as we did before, uh, some, we'll use the use shared value from uh, reanimated, which will have a mean and max value, it will have a progress, and also this progress dot value will be equal to Okay, actually, let's do this before. 
So what is will return? We'll return a view with a style. Sorry, let's import this from uh, React Native. Let's define the style to be equal to uh, style. And we are also going to have another view uh, where we're going to have a style where we set the flex direction set to row, the align items set to center. Okay. And here we are going to have an icons from Ionicons. Uh, so just to uh, make it, it more clear what we are building right now. So before we have built this component here and now we are building this component this volume bar right here which has a slider and then it has this icon and this icon so yeah let's do it let's import ionicons uh great let's import the colors great so this is the volume low and this the left hand side icon uh then we have basically this exact same slider as we implement inside the player progress bar. So I'm going to paste it just here and I'm, I'm going to import the, uh, the slider. Here we import the util style. Okay, so basically uh, we did the exact same thing. Uh, the only thing that changed that when the value of the slider change, we are going to execute the update volume that we are going to implement soon great so uh, actually after the slider we are gonna have also another icon which will be the volume height icon and yeah i think that that's it uh, we need just to implement this update uh, volume so for doing that we are gonna go here and we're gonna use use track player volume and from here we're going to extract the volume and also the update volume function. Uh, great. Okay, now uh, let's implement this hook. So let's go inside the hooks. Let's create use track player volume dot tsx and let's implement this hook. So use track player volume. Okay, so inside here we're gonna have a state which is going to be volume and then set volume. And this will be an uh, use state, which is going to be a number or undefined. And initially it will be undefined. And then we are going to define a function called get volume. This will use a use callback function. And uh, over here, what we need to do is called const current volume is equal to await uh, track player dot uh, get volume uh, and then we're going to set the volume to be the current volume also since this use uh, await we need to uh, specify the same keyword and uh, so where we are going to execute this get volume we are going to execute this get volume inside a use effect so let's go here let's define the dependency array depend from get volume and here we are gonna to execute this get volume function so basically what happened is that when the component mount it will execute um like extract the execute this track player get volume and set the value inside this state obviously we need to return the volume and also the function update volume that I'm going to define just over here. So let's define update volume. And this will be a new callback. So what we need to do here is check that actually the new volume will be a number. And if the new volume is less than zero or the new volume is greater than one we are going to return because the volume must be between zero and one otherwise we we'll just set the volume like that and also call the track player dot set volume to the new volume volume great so this will be an async function okay so uh, it seems that uh, uh, react is called back as a missing dependency uh, volume hmm. Yeah, because this is an error, this should be new volume. Great. So 
we can just use this uh, use track player volume over here so import it and now on value change we are going to execute this update volume and actually we are uh, missing something uh, we need to update this progress value uh, with the current volume so we're going to do this progress dot value is going to be the volume but if it's not defined it will be zero great great job i think that that should be hit now if we go back inside our player screen we should be equal uh, we should be able to import this and also the player progress bar as well actually uh inside the player progress bar i think that okay it looks okay so the last component that we are missing is the player uh, repeat toggle that we are going to implement inside our component so let's go here and let's say player repeat toggle.tsx so let's export a new react component player repeat toggle like this yeah so uh this component basically uh let's see what we are implementing right now so we are implementing uh this component over here this one and this can be in three possible state uh off state or repeat the current track or repeat the current queue so we have basically three different state so let's define this uh like the repeat order by defining uh, uh variable called repeat order which will be an array and over here we are going to uh, use the repeat mode of dot off for the first state then repeat mode dot track for the second state and then the repeat mode dot q for the third state uh great yeah actually here we can say this will be a constant uh, so we can get a type inference from a uh, TypeScript. Great, awesome. So let's try to implement this component. So basically here, we just have to display an icon that is going to be uh, dynamically rendered based on the current uh, repeat state. Basically here, we are gonna have sort of state called uh, repeat mode and we can set it for example to repeat mode dot off for now but we are going to extract an hook soon for managing this state so now we are going to extract an icon to manage to like decide what icon should be rendered based on this state so here we are gonna do a pattern matching using match from ts pattern so here we're gonna match the repeat mode and we are going to return basically an icon and this icon will be will be of type icon name this icon name will come actually from uh, let's define the type here will come from the component props of the material community icons that we need to import so let's go here and let's import material community icons from expo vector icons so basically the icon name is the prop name of the props of this component right here and we can also extract the icon props of the same component uh great so basically in the icon we need to return this icon name so what we're going to do is that we are going to do the pattern matching so if we get for example repeat mode dot off uh, we are going to return uh, repeat the icon repeat off is that if we are going to have the state repeat mode dot uh, track, we are gonna have the icon repeat once, and finally, and finally we are gonna have a third state, uh, which will be this one. If the repeat mode is Q, we are going to uh, display the repeat icon, and also we are gonna have also a fallback icon which we are going to define like that. Like otherwise, we are going to uh, return repeat off. Uh, great, so now that we have the icon, we need to render it. So let's return material uh, community icons. Uh, we are gonna pass the name of the icon that we choose. And we are gonna also pass an onPress function, 
where we are going to execute the toggle repeat mode that we are going to define soon and a color which is going to be colors dot uh, icon uh, great also we are going to pass order props that we are going to extract from here so let's use the spread operators and here we are going to say icon props great so the component is um, almost done we need a way to manage actually this state and for doing that we are going to extract a comp an hook called use track player uh, repeat mode so here we're gonna say use track player repeat mode uh, let's implement it so let's go inside our hooks and let's implement use track player repeat mode dot sx let's go here let's define it use track player uh, repeat mode and this is going to be so basically we are gonna have a, a state called repeat mode and we'll also set repeat mode here let's use a new state and this will be of type repeat uh, mode uh, great then we are gonna have a use effect where basically we are going to run track player dot get repeat mode and when it's done we are going to set uh, repeat mode so yeah basically this is for initializing this value when the hooks runs for the first time basically also we are going to return the repeat mode and also we are going to export a function called change repeat mode and this will be a use callback function uh, like that and here actually we are going to use a sync with a repeat mode to be equal to repeat mode type and here we're going to say await track player dot set repeat mode and it's going to be repeat mode uh great also we are going to set repeat mode to repeat mode to update our state so basically the pattern that we are seeing that every time we want to change something we need to update both the state but also the track player state because it's like that we have the internal state of our application and then another state that is internally managed by the track player so we need to be sure to keep them in sync in order to have our application working as expected okay so let's go here and let's export this change repeat mode and that should be it for this component we can go back to our player repeat toggle import this and actually here we can extract the repeat mode and also the change repeat mode yeah i think that something is off here otherwise yeah i think we need to specify a function here that will say repeat uh, off uh great uh, we are missing only the function toggle repeat mode that I'm going to define over here. Toggle repeat mode. And this will be a function uh, where we're going to say if the current repeat mode is not defined, we're just going to return. Otherwise, we're going to take the current index by saying repeat order dot index of repeat mode. So basically, we're saying... Uh, inside these three possible state where am i right now for example zero it means we are in off state one it means we are in position uh, we are in track mode and two it means that we are in queue mode so once we have the index we can compute the next index uh, the next index that is going to be basically the current index plus one and we are going to use the modulo operator repeat order dot length. That means this modulo operator. So basically, what we do here is that is say that if I'm track, I'm going to this state that is Q. But if I'm Q, if I uh, if I do plus one, I will go out of boundary. And with this modulo operator, actually, we will go back to the off state so that way it should work as expected next we have to call our change repeat mode function by passing repeat order and passing the index that will be the next index uh great so 
we pass the toggle repeat mode here and now we are able to import this function over here and our player should be a uh, ready i guess so yeah let's uh, let's try it let's try to run uh, a song let's let's try to play a song like this one let's open it up and you can see that this is working just fine we have all the necessary necessary components that uh we need so you can see that the play pause button uh, is working also let's try our volume so i'm going to play my song and then then i'm going to increase and decrease the volume and it's working just fine now let's try the player progress bar so let's play it and it's working just fine you can also see that how the uh, elapsed set time and the duration time are updated uh, while the track keeps progressing Awesome. And I think the last button that we want to test is the repeat mode. You can see that now we are in Q mode, but if I press it, we go into off mode. So the next track in the queue will not be played. And actually, uh, this icon that we see right here, it means that uh, the current track will be looped over and over again. Actually, we cannot tested this feature yet and also we cannot test skip to next or skip to previous because we do not yet introduce the concept of uh, queues and we are gonna to make it soon as soon as we introduce our internal state manager and after that we are going to have a mechanism to have a queue of song play one after the other also the favorite button is also not working because we do not yet implement a way to favorite our songs but the most important thing is to know that our track player is now working as expected so we can also select different song and you can see that is working just fine also here It's working just fine the last thing that we are missing is a super cool effect and it is linear gradient background that is based on the current images so let's try to implement it okay great so let's work on this track player background effect for doing that we are we're going to extract an hook called use use player background.psx uh, great so here let's export this use player background and basically this component like we'll take an input an image url which must be a string inside here we are gonna have a state which we're going to store image colors and also set image colors and let's use this use state to be of type ius image colors that will come from react native image colors that uh, one of the dependency that we installed before but actually this can also be null because we need to make a fetch call to retrieve these colors from the uh, image that we want to that we are going to display. So over here, we are going to run a use effect. And here we are gonna then use the get colors that will come, that get colors function that will come from the React Native image colors. Uh, this function will take the image URL and then some option, for example, the fallback uh, color that in this case uh, will be 
I would say colors dot background. Then we are gonna enable the caching and also the key will be the image URL. Great. So since this is an async function, we are going to use the promise API. So we are going to use the then and here we are going to receive some colors and these colors are going to be uh, set inside the set image colors and passing these colors as iOS image colors. So here we are inferring, uh, like we are uh, inferring that the type is uh, strictly the iOS image colors because we are targeting iOS devices. But in case you are building for Android devices or you know cross device cross devices, you cannot make this sort of inference. So I encourage you to take a look at this library, React Native Image Colors, because it actually handles all the possible uh, cases. Inside here, we need to add inside the dependency array, the image URL, and then return this image colors. Great. So now we can just uh, we can start using this use player background. So let's go back inside the player screen and let's use this hook. So let's go here, import the hook and extract the uh, image colors. But obviously we need to pass the active track dot artwork. Uh, in case the image will not be defined, we're gonna use the unknown track image URI. Uh, great. Okay, so at this point we need to create this uh, linear gradient effect that will start from top and will end uh, to the bottom. So what we are going to do is to wrap all of this content inside the linear uh, graded from Expo linear gradient library. So let's take all of this content and let's put it inside. And here we are going to set the style, set to flex one and then we are going to set the colors so these colors are going to be if image colors is defined it's going to be an array containing the image colors dot background and um, so this is the starting color so from the uh, top and it's going to go uh, towards the another colors which is going to be image colors dot primary uh, great if image color is not defined, we are going to return single element array with the colors dot background. Great. Now, if we hit save, it should work as we expect. Let's try. And it's working just fine. Let's try with also other possible songs. For example, let's try Desert Brawl open it up and you can see that we have actually um, a different effect but it's still based on this image uh, let's try for example as you fade away and you can see how awesome is background effect and just with a few lines of code and mostly thankful those react native image colors so our player screen is now almost ready we are missing only the skip buttons functionalities and the favorite button functionality but we are going we are going to implement it soon when we are going to have a way to manage our queue of songs so now let's move on with other features so the next thing where we are going to work on is the favorite screen so let's take a look of a preview of this uh, new screen. So the favorite screen basically will be exactly the same as the, as the song screen. We will have the same header, the same buttons, and also a list of songs where we can scroll through along with our uh, floating player visible in case we have a currently track selected. The only thing that we that is going to change inside the screen is the list of songs that we are going to display. Obviously inside the favorite screen 
we are going to display only the tracks that has been favorited by our user. So let's dismiss this preview and let's take a quick look at our library.json. If you remember, we had a property called rating, which can either be zero or one, where one means that the user has favorited this song. Whereas for all the tracks that does not have this rating property or have the rating property set to zero, that will mean that track is not being favorited by our user. So let's go back and let's start implementing this track. So first thing, I'm going to close all of these tabs. And if you remember inside the app folder, we have tabs and we have the favorites folder. And this favorites folder actually uh, right now is displaying this text right here. So favorite screen. So let's actually close this player screen and let's open the favorite. Okay, so what we can do is basically remove this text here and re basically replicate the exact same layout we used inside the song screen. So if you remember, we had basically a scroll view uh, from React Native and inside the scroll view, we had the tracks list. So the tracks list takes in input a list of tracks. And for now, we are going to import the same library folder. But after this, having implemented the screen, we are going to start implementing um, shared our state manager. So we are not going to use directly our library from the mock JSON file. So here is just to make a demonstration of what we need to uh, display. So let's go here. Let's go inside the assets. Uh, let's go inside the data and library.json. And here we are going to pass this library. Also, uh, let's remember that we need to pass the scroll enabled set to false. And also, yeah, that should be it. Actually, we need to apply a style here and say that the padding horizontal will be the screen padding dot horizontal. And also we need to apply another important property called content in set adjustment behavior set to automatic in order to have our search functionality work as expected. Okay, so right now I think that I just stopped my uh, application. So let's run it again. And let's see our uh, result. Actually, in this way, we are going to display all the library, all the tracks inside our library, but actually we want only to display the tracks that has been favorited by our user. So in order to do that, uh, we're basically going to filtering our song. So let's define our favorites uh, songs or actually favorites tracks to be, let's use an use memo here in order to uh, optimize this code. And here, what we are going to do is to basically say that we're going to basically return library and then filter. And here we are going to apply, basically, we are going to have a truck and this truck, we are going to take only the truck that has the value set to one. So now our favorite trucks should be what we expect. So we can pass the favorites trucks in here. And actually, uh, we can also add uh, the search func functionality. So let's go here and let's use the use navigation search hook. And in here, we need to pass an object where we say, where we specify the search bar option. And inside we specify the placeholder, which will be find in songs. Great. And then we can also go here and extend our, our filtering function. So beside taking all the tracks that have the rating set to one, we want also apply the track title filter by passing our search. Okay. Actually let's do it. Uh, then. Okay. So 
I think that now if we go to the favorite screen, you can see that the page is looking, uh, the screen is looking fine because we have only the tracks that uh, currently has the rating set to one. And this is actually what we are searching for. Also, the we have the search functionality, we have the title, so it's working fine. Currently, we are not actually applying the search behavior, but we are gonna do it uh, soon. The most important thing is to know that now the two screen work properly. And another thing that I want you to notice is that if I, for example, play this song, I'm gonna stop it now, and I'm going to change screen, you can see how the floating player remains here without remounting. And also if I play, if I play the songs, it keeps playing. So you can see how placing the player inside a shared layout makes uh, possible keep this component being mounted between our in-app navigation. Awesome. So at this point, before starting implementing our search functionality, I think it's time for introducing a state manager for our music player application. Right now, we are actually using our library as our states, but actually we want something more precise and that can let us to handle our state exactly how we want. In order to do that, we're going to install a state manager called Zustand. So Zustand is basically one of the easiest way to implement a state manager in React application using just plain hooks. So let me just increase this window and you can see how simple it is uh, to stand. Basically, we are going to define the type of our store and basically what we are going to do is creating our store and then just extracting some sort of hooks. For example, here we are extracting a hook called uStore. And in that way, we are basically just playing around with React hooks that we can just hook up in our React components and from there access, uh, accessing in our, uh, our state. Obviously, uh, this library is optimized for avoiding too many re-rendering, etc. So it's and and also it's super simple to use, and that is the reason why I decided to use uh, Justand. It's simple, it's very efficient, and so I think it's the right pick for our music application. So let's dismiss this tab and let's install Justand. So let's go here and let's open up a new terminal. So from here, we're gonna run yarn add to stand. So once installed, we're gonna go inside our explorer and create a new folder called store. And inside this folder, we're gonna store our different stores for managing different domains. For example, the first thing that we're going to manage it will be the library. So let's go here and let's create a file called library.tsx. Great. So inside this file, we are gonna first define our interface for our library store. So let's define an interface called library state. And this will have a list of tracks that will be of type track with playlist. So you might be wondering uh, where we're gonna get this track with playlist. Well, actually we are going to define inside the, inside the helpers folder, we're going to define a file called types.ts. And in here, we are gonna just define our type that we defined before. So export type track with playlist. And this will be equal to a track from React Native Track Player and a property called playlist, which will be optional and will contain a list of strings. So if you're wondering why we're gonna have this property playlist, it's basically because inside our library.json, remember that we have this property called playlist, which is an array of strings. And these strings contains the name of the playlist where that tracks appertain to. 
So that is the reason why we are basically extending our initial track type with this new property called playlist. Actually, we are going to have also two other types and, th and those will be uh, playlist. So a playlist basically will be, uh, will have a name, which will be a string. Then we are going to have a list of tracks. So track as an array and then an artwork review, which will be a string. Then we're going to have another type called artist. So an artist will have a name, will be a string, and then we'll have a list of tracks. Oops, this is track. So these are all the types that we're going to need in our uh, music player application. So let's go back to our library.tsx. So here now we can import our track with playlist and actually we can extend this library state further. So here we are going to also add two uh, action that will be toggle track favorite and this will be a function that will take an in input a track and will basically return void. So here we can actually import this track from React Native Track Player. And here we are going to have a second action that will be add to playlist. This will be a function that takes a track and also a playlist name and will return void. So we are going to implement this function uh, later on on, uh, on this tutorial when we are going to implement the favorites and the playlist management. But for now, let's focus on how we are going to retrieve this list of tracks. So here we are going to define a hook called use library store. And in here we are going to use create the create function from Zustan passing the type that we just defined, so library state. We are gonna call this function and then we are gonna pass initialize function in here. So this will be, this will accept basically a sort of callback function where we are gonna have access to the set function and inside this object that we are going to return, we are going to initialize our use library store. So here, in here, we have to define these three properties. So the first property is the tracks property. And this basically will be our library. So library will be just be imported uh, from our uh, assets slash data uh, library.json. Uh, great. Uh, then we are gonna have a toggle track. Uh, actually, I think that we need to wrap this object inside the parentheses, otherwise uh, we might get some error. So let's see. So here we should have toggle track favorite. And for now, we are going to just implement an empty function. And also here for add to playlist, we are going to have an empty function. Uh, great. So our use library store is now ready. So now we, what we can do is extracting two useful hooks that are going to compute like two utility hooks that are going to compute the values that we need starting from this use library store. For example, we are going to have, we're going to have a first hook called use tracks and these hooks, what is going to do is using the use library store access in the state and return state dot tracks. So basically every time we are going to use this use tracks, this will return a list of track with playlist, exactly this one. Awesome. So let's go ahead and let's implement also another hook called use favorites. So this hook basically will be a little bit more complex compared to the use tracks. And here first we are going to extract the favorites tracks by doing use library store uh, accessing the state and in here we are going to do state dot tracks dot filter oops filter we are going to take a track and we are gonna to do, do rate track dot rating is equal to one 
this is basically the same logic that we did the exact same logic we did inside the favorite screen for computing our favorite structs awesome so we need also actually to we can also implement this uh, toggle struct favorite and we're gonna do use library store and we're gonna access in the state and accessing the state dot toggle track favorite so basically we are extracting this property right here from use library store and we are saving saving it in this variable okay this hook what is going to do is returning the favorites and also the toggle track favorite awesome uh, later on in this tutorial we're gonna also have other other hooks for example for managing the playlist for managing artists and so on but for this part we are good to go so now let's go back to our favorite screen and instead of computing the favorite struck in this way what we are going to do is doing use favorites from our store and from here we're gonna access in the favorites and then we are gonna uh, we are going to filter these tracks by applying the track title filter and passing the current search. Awesome. So now what we can do is first uh, remove this use memo and extracting the our favorite tracks by doing use favorites dot favorites. At the same time, we can also filter our favorites tracks by doing use memo and then passing this function right here so here we are going to do if not search we are going to return the favorites tracks otherwise we are going to do return favorites tracks dot filter and we are going to pass here track title filter and passing the current search also here we have to specify the dependency array which will include the search and also the favorite structs awesome at this point we can take this new filtered favorite structs and passing down to our tracks list awesome let's save let's refresh our application let's go inside our favorites and you can see that the result is exactly the same Actually, now we can also be able to filter our songs. For example, let's write outside, and you can see that it's working fine. Great. We can start using also our new state manager inside the song screen. So let's go ahead inside our app folder, open up the songs folder, index, and in here, what we are going to do is to extract our tracks here by doing use tracks and in this way we can remove our library from here here we can just return the tracks and also here we can re uh, replace the library with the tracks and here pass the tracks so let's save let's refresh and you can see that everything is working as expected. So we still have access to our library of songs and also the search should work as we expect. Great. So now it's time to introduce a very important concept inside our music player application. So, so far, as you might remember, we don't have a way to skip to the previous or next song inside our library of songs so for example if i go here and start playing this song the skip to next or even the skip to previous will not work as we expect and this is because we are never introduced the concept of a queue to understand what is a queue i just prepare a diagram that i'm going to show you so let me increase this and let me just center it a bit right that should be uh, visible i hope so so what is a queue a queue basically is a list of songs that gets played one after each other so for example if we are playing the track two 
the next song in the queue will be track 3 and after that that will be the track 4 and when we reach the end of the queue generally we start from the beginning so the most important thing to know about the queue is that every queue so every this kind of list of song have a specific id because not every queue are the same so to identify a queue we need an id why the concept of a queue is important to understand in our application so let's move on to another diagram Uh, so, so far we know that each of our screen, so the song screen, favorites, playlist and artist, uh, each of them has like an internal queue, so a list of songs that we want to be played. So basically every screen has basically an internal queue and each of them have a particular ID, for example the song screen will have is a queue of songs with ID songs. The same for the favorites tracks, which has a queue with ID favorites. So why it is important to differentiate this queue for each screen? Well, that is important because the track player internally has an internal queue manager. So basically what we want to do is that every time we change we change screen, we need to update the track player queue. So let's make an example. Let's suppose that we are uh, actually playing uh, a track, uh, the track number two from the song screen, and we go inside the favorite screen. So when we go here, and for example, we decide to play the track number three, basically the queue, uh, the track player now must know that the current queue active will be this one and not this one. So not this one, basically. This is an, a very important thing to know because otherwise, if we are not managing our queue in this way, we might cause a very bad ex uh, user experience because the user expect that every time he change uh, a screen and start playing a song from that screen, the, the queue internally changed where that song belongs to. So this is a very uh, subtle concept to know and it's very important to understand correctly. Also, we must remember that this queue that we see right here, so every queue associated uh, for each of, of the screen that we have in our music player application will actually be uh, ma managed by our Justan state manager, but instead the track player will have his internal state which will be different from the Justan state manager. So it's important to keep the track player state in sync with the, our mus uh, music player state which is managed by Justan. Okay then, so I hope that this is clear now and actually now we are going to start implementing the queue management. So let's go ahead and let's start implementing our queue manager. Okay, great. So to handle our queue management, we are gonna have a new piece of state inside our store. So let's go here and let's create a new file called, called queue.tsx. So, what will be the type of this queue store? So we're gonna have an active queue ID, which will be a string or null in case we don't have any queue active right now, and also a function for updating the current active queue. So set active, set active queue ID, which is going to take an ID, which is going to be a string, and we'll return it. Uh, great. So now let's export this hook called useQStore. Here we are going to create a new Zustan store, passing the QStore, and then passing the initializer function. So inside here we're gonna first set the active QID to be null 
because when we start the application, we don't have any queue initially set. And then let's set the set active queue ID, which is going to take an ID. And here we are gonna use set. Actually, we need to extract the set function from here. And this set function will update the current state by passing the active queue ID to be the ID passed as input. Uh, great. Finally, we're gonna have an util hook called useQ, and this will be just a function that will do useQ store and will return the current state. So from this useQ, uh, we are gonna be able to extract the active queue ID and, uh, and to set the active queue ID. Awesome. Now let's start using this new state that we just introduced. So let's close these tabs and now let's open uh, the component uh, tracks list. So inside the track list, the first thing that we're going to do is extending the tracks list props. So now we're going to take an input an ID, which will be a string. This ID will basically uh, identify the queue that is associated to the list of songs uh, that is rendered by this tracks list. Awesome. Once we have this ID, we can extract it from here. Okay, so inside the track list, the tracks list component, we are gonna have, we are gonna use the hook use queue that we just defined. And from here, we are going to extract uh, the active queue ID and also the function set active queue ID. Awesome. Uh, we're gonna need also another variable called Q offset, which will basically uh, be a number. And it won't be a part of state since we, uh, we are not cause a re-render when this Q offset change. So we can store it inside a new ref. And the initial value of this Q offset will be zero. This Q offset will be important for managing, uh, for saving the currently uh, index of the track being uh, played and will be super important for inside our uh, handle track select function. So what is going to happen now? So right now, when we basically select a song from our list of queue, basically uh, what we do is loading the selected track and then we just play. But it is not enough. We have to, every time we play, uh, we start playing a song, we have to set the correct active queue in order to have the skip to next and skip to previous button functionalities. So the first thing that we are going to do is to remove this code. So what we are going to do now when we are going to select a song? So the first thing that we are going to do is to identify the track index of the selected song. So let's just go here and, and let's just rename the, uh, the, this track param name to selected track, just to be more clear. Awesome. Then what we are going to do is to ex extract the track index. The track index basically will be equals to tracks.findIndex. We're gonna take the, uh, the currently uh, compared track and if the tracks are the same, so basically they have the same URL to the selected track dot URL, then we find the track index that we are searching for. So the track index will basically uh, represent the index of the selected track inside our list of uh, songs. Great. So in case the track index is equal to minus one, it means that the tracks was not found. So we're going to just return and not doing anything. Awesome. Now there is an important part. We need to understand if we are basically coming from a different queue from the active one. So basically we can have two use cases. There is the first case uh, in case we are not changing the queue. So for example, right now we are playing the anxiety, anxiety song and I select another song, for example, changing. This scenario is basically the scenario uh, in which we are selecting a song from the same queue. 
But there is a second scenario where we are playing a song from for example, from a different screen, and then I go, for example, in another screen, the, uh, the favorite, for example, and I select a song in here. So here, what happened is that we are changing queue, and changing queue means that we have to update our internal queue. So the, uh, what we are going to do now is to understand first if we are changing queue. So let's define this function called is changing queue. And basically, it is a simple comparison of the ID of the queue associated to this uh, Traxlis component. So we are changing queue if the current ID does not match the active queue ID. Uh, the active queue ID, let's remember that we take from the Zustand store. Awesome. Um, actually, here I made a mistake. Is is changing queue. Okay, so what we need to do if we are changing queue? So basically we have two case. The case in case we are changing queue and the case we are not changing queue. Let's try to tackle first the is changing queue. So in case we are changing queue, basically we have to reconstruct the track player queue. And how we are going to do that? Uh, we are going first to uh, split the list of songs into part. For example, let's say that I select this song right here, changing. So what we are going to do is to extract first the part, uh, the, all the songs before changing, and then also the songs after the song changing. So this one. So how are we going to do that? So we are going to first define the before tracks and here basically we are going to do tracks dot slice and we're going we're gonna uh, start from zero up to the current track index and then we're gonna have also the after tracks that are gonna be the tracks dot slice dot track index plus one great so now that we have splitted our list of songs in two parts, what we are going to do is this. First, we are going to take the track player and call the reset function. So the reset function, as you can see, reset the player, stopping the current track and clear the current queue. What we need to do now is to select this song that we select as the first one in the queue. So we are going to do await track player dot add uh, selected track uh, and then after the selected track we want to play all the after tracks so all the songs that comes after the selected tracks in this case hotlanta and outside the box so we are going to do await track player dot add after tracks awesome and then also we want a sort of a uh, circular um, like a sort of circular navigation of our queue. So once the selected track has been played and when the after tracks has been played, we want to go back to the beginning. So we want to also play these songs right here. So here we are going to do track player dot add before tracks. Awesome. And after that, so here basically we, uh, let's say we construct the new queue and after having constructed we can just play the current song so let's go here and say await rock player dot play so play basically will play the first song in the queue in this case the selected track awesome there is also another important part here to do and it is updating the current queue offset so here the queue offset will be queue offset dot current will be equal to the track uh, index and also uh, let's not forget to update the current the currently active queue so set active queue id will be equal to the current id awesome Okay, so this one was the first scenario in case we, are, we were changing the queue. So basically we were playing a song inside a screen and we select uh, another song from a different uh, screen, so, so uh, inside a different queue. But there is also the other scenario in which we are playing, uh, we want to start playing a song, which is basically 
in the same queue of where we are. So this is a little bit more tricky because basically we need to select the right index of the song that we want to play. So here we don't have to reconstruct the queue from scratch because the currently active queue is the one that we want to play, but we need to uh, pick the right index of the, the song that we want to play. So basically here we are going to have a variable called next song or actually next track index and this will be basically the currently track index so the track index of the song that we want to uh, play so here what we're going to do is take the track index and subtracting to the currently q offset dot current and so in case the difference between this expression is less than zero what we are going to do is doing tracks.length plus track index minus q offset dot current great otherwise what we are going to do is to do track index minus q offset dot current so this is a little bit tricky to understand but i encourage you to take time to stop and try to, to play with this code to understand why we are making these checks. This is the only way I, I found for having, you know, Q working as we expect. And as always, you will find the repo on my GitHub. Uh, you will find the link down in the description. So yeah, I encourage you to take a moment to understand how this code works. So when we have the next track index that we want to play, what we are going to do is to just do track player dot skip to the next track index and then do track player dot play. So you might have noticed that here we use the skip function and we are using the skip function because we are already inside a valid queue. So we don't need to reconstruct the queue from scratch. So, okay. That's, that should be it for our queue management. This, I think, one of the hardest logic inside this music player logic. And yeah, as, as I said before, take your time to understand how this code works and be sure to at least have a glance on how this logic is handling this part, this feature, which are the queue management. Okay, after that, I think that we can try to see if our queue is working as we expect. So uh, what I'm going to do now is to try to select a song and then uh, skip to the next or the previous songs. So let's try it. I'm going to select these songs. And now uh, I expect that if I uh, press the skip to next button, the cattle songs should be start to play so let's try it and that's it you can see now the player is in post state but you can see that every time i press skip to next it is updated correctly so also another important feature is that if i select this song for example it gets um, selected correctly and you can see that our skip to next keeps working as we expect. Also, if we reach the end of the queue and I press skip to next, you can see how the queue start become like start from the beginning. And this is because uh, we have the repeat mode set to queue. Awesome. Another important thing that I want to show you is that also the skip to previous button works. So obviously uh, both skip to next and skip to previous work inside the track player. So let's try it. Okay, so anxiety, that is correct. So now I expect to memories start playing. And you can see how this is working just fine. Okay, also the other scenario that we had is that basically we, we are playing a song from these screen songs, so from the queue associated to the song screen, and we change screen and we start playing a song from a different queue. 
but you can see that is not working. Why it's not working? Actually, now it gets selected the right song. Why it's not working? Why when we select this new, the song from a different screen uh, does not get updated correctly? That is because if we go here and let's run a TypeScript check, you can see that we have some error. And the error is that the tracks list now accepting input uh, needs an input an ID. And this is the ID of the queue which this tracks list internally manage. So basically here we need to pass a unique ID for the queue managed by the track list. So for generating this ID, we are gonna have a specific uh, function. So let's go inside the helpers, inside the miscellaneous file. Let's just paste this function. So this function is called generating song list ID, but actually I would prefer to name it generate track list ID. And this will take a track list uh, name. So let's pass it here. And basically what it does, it takes an input a track list name and also an optional search functionality. And from here it computes this string ID. So the string ID basically is the track list name. And if we have uh, also a search associated to that track list, it appends this suffix right here, which will include the search. So let's start using this generate tracks list ID. So uh, let's go here and let's call generate track list ID. And here we are gonna pass we're gonna pass as the track list name, we're gonna pass favorites, and also the search uh, variable in case we have a search going on. Also, uh, we need to do the exact same thing for our uh, song screen, so this one. Oh, actually, I just made a mistake because this was the song screen, so here I'm going to rename this to songs. And then I'm going inside the favorite and okay, this is now is the favorite screen. I'm going to specify the ID and here I'm going to say generate track list ID. I'm going to pass the favorites and then I'm going to pass this search. Ah, uh, great. So now it should, everything should be correct. Let's run a TypeScript check. Okay. And now let's try again this particular case. So we can see that the skip to next is working just fine. Also, if I skip manually by selecting another song is working. Also, the previous uh, button is working. Now, what I'm going to do is, for example, selecting this song, then going inside another screen and selecting a track from a different screen. So here, and you can see that is working. So now this, the track gets selected correctly, even though it's part of another queue, and also the internal queue is updated correctly. So now you can see that the queue is managed as we expect. Great. We reach one of the most important feature of our application that was uh, managing uh, the internal queue of the track player. Great, great work. Okay then, so the next thing that we are going to implement is going to be our play and shuffle button. So these two buttons right here. So we waited until now because for implementing these two buttons, we need uh, all the logic for managing queues. And basically what these two buttons will do is uh, the play button will just uh, start playing the current queue from the beginning while the shuffle button will take the current queue, shuffle it and then just playing the queue. So let's just uh, start implementing this button and so let's just close uh, all of these tabs and inside the components we are gonna create a new component called QControls.tsx. So let's go here and let's export this Q controls React component. So this component will have also some kind of props, which we are gonna call Q 
controls props and it's gonna be equal to this type here so we are gonna take an input a list of track and also uh, we are gonna take uh, some view props awesome so now let's go here and let's extract these props so q controls props let's take all the tracks and also we need the style and the other view props great so now let's return a view component in here uh, let's import this view from react native so this parent view basically will have two child view one for basically the play button and another one for the the shuffle button uh great so let's go here and let's set the style for this component for this view to one and let's do the exact same thing for the other view uh great inside here we're gonna have a touchable opacity that will represent our button we're gonna set an active opacity of 0 0.8 and we're gonna also apply not here a style and this style will be from styles um, dot button uh, actually we need to implement this style so let's go here and let's implement this style sheet let's import these two styles so we're gonna have basically a button style and also a button text style so here we have to import the colors so the button basically we have some padding uh these background colors uh border radius uh some inner layout with flex direction row justify content center etc and also the button text will have We'll inherit all the default styles of text. We'll set the color of the text to primary to have the red text colored. And also font weight 600, font size 18, and text align center. Uh, great. So uh, we can actually do uh, copy this exact same style and apply it here. So touchable opacity and plus it here uh great so here actually we are gonna have also an press where we are going to handle play here while he near on press we're gonna handle shuffle actually we are gonna handle the shuffle play uh great uh so inside the uh play button we are gonna use an ionicons Let's import Ionicons from Expo Vector Icons. So, so here we're gonna use name will be play. Also size will be 22 and the color will be colors dot primary. Great. And also in here, we're gonna have a text uh, which is going to say play. And let's import this text from React Native. So let's go here, text play and this style will be uh, styles dot button text actually great so basically we are gonna have the exact same thing for our uh shuffle button so we are gonna use uh an ionicons with the shuffle sharp icon side set to 24 color and text set to shuffle uh awesome at this point what we are uh, missing uh, is to implement this handle play and this handle shuffle play but before doing that actually we need to apply a parent style to this parent view container and here we're gonna set the flex direction set to row and also a column gap set to 16 and also we're gonna merge it with the parent with the prop style uh, awesome can also pass all the view props spread all the view props in here and now we should be able to start implementing our first handler which will be handle play so handle play will be an async function that what is going to do is to first await that track player is going to set the queue to the current tracks that we pass in input and then is going to start playing uh that queue by running 
truckplayer.play and that's it for the handle play then we're gonna have also the handle shuffle play and this also will be an async function and here what we need to compute first uh, is the shuffle tracks so we're gonna go here make a copy of the current tracks and then sort it using a random uh, sorter so for a random sorter we are gonna do mat.random minus 0.5 this way basically we are generating a number which can be uh, negative or positive with the exact same probability so let's go ahead and let's go here and say track player uh, dot set Q and set the shuffle tracks and then do it the exact same thing so uh track player dot play uh great so that should be it for our uh two com uh, two button component and now we should be ready to start using this q controls component inside our tracks list so we want these two buttons to be displayed like just under the search bar, so here. So in order to do that, we are gonna have this component in the in the header of our track list. So we can go here and say list header component is gonna be equals to Q controls. And here we are gonna pass the tracks to be tracks. And also we're gonna set a style to have a padding bottom set to 20 great so if we save you can see that we reach what we were searching for and actually let's try and let's see if it does it work so now if i play i expect that this queue will start from the beginning so let's try it and that's it so now if i press skip to next i'm expecting that it goes to the memory songs and it's working just fine. Instead, if I press the shuffle button, I expect in this to generate a random shuffle of these songs uh, in a obviously random order. So let's make it a try. So let's uh, let's press shuffle. Okay, and you can see that the track selected is the cattle. And now, when I'm going to press next, uh, I'm expecting that a random song inside the same queue gets selected. So let's try it. Okay, you can see that this track has been selected as the next one. Let's see what the next one will be. Okay, the second one. Let's make another try. And this one was the next one generated. So the two button is working just fine. The, the only thing that I want to add also is a way to manually control the visibility of these two button using a prop. So what I'm going to do here is going inside the track list prop, adding a property called hide Q controls, which will be an optional prop and which will be a boolean. So let's extract this hide Q controls and let's use it here. So let's say that if uh, we do not want to hide the queue controls. We are going to display these queue controls. Otherwise, we're gonna set undefined. So basically, every time we're gonna set this value to true from a parent component, the queue controls will not be displayed. Otherwise, they will be displayed correctly. So we are gonna set the uh, default value to be false. So by default, we want always to display the IQ controls, but in case we are gonna pass it through, these one are, go are not going to be displayed. So if I go here and I set true, you can see that now the Q controls are not visible. But as we, we were saying before, we're gonna set it false by default. Uh, great. So also if I uh, we go back to the favorites, yeah, we get also the the controls because uh, in this component we are using the tracks list component as well. Great, great job. Great. Now it's time to start implementing another screen of our application and that will be the artist screen. So before starting, let's take a look at a preview of the artist screen. So basically this screen will uh, be composed of 
two screens actually. The first one will be a list of all the artists that we find inside our library and basically will be a scrollable list of all of our artists. Okay, you can see that the item, the artist item is very simple. We are going to display actually a default uh, unknown artist image because uh, I did not bring any image for the artist inside this project and also the artist name. When we are going to press on a particular artist, we are going to open a new screen and that will be the artist detail. So the artist detail screen basically will feature the main image related to the artist, which will actually be this unknown artist image. We are going to display the artist name we are gonna, and then we are going to have our list of songs or list of tracks related to that artist. And from there, we are going to have a track list that we are, uh, is going to be managed as a queue. So if we go here and, for example, we are going to press play, we are going to play all the tracks related to that artist. All right then, so let's go ahead and uh, let's close this tab and inside the app folder, let's open up the tabs group and you can see that we already have the artist folder. Actually here, we're gonna make some new update. So let's start by implementing our index file because right now is actually an empty screen. So as we did for the other screen songs and favorites, we're gonna have a scroll view and inside we are going to have this time we are not going to use the tracks list because we are not displaying a list of tracks but we want to display a list of artists so here we are going to have a custom uh, flat list that is going to come from uh, the flat list component of react native so inside here we have to uh, extract first our artist so here I'm expecting to have something like artist and then do like having a hook called use artist that will return us the, all the uh, artists found in our library. So let's go implement this use artist. So let's open up the our hook uh, folder, actually not the hook folder but the store and open up library. So in here under the use favorite we are going to define a new hook called use artists. So this will be a function. And in here, basically, what we are going to do is to use the use library store. We are going to extract the state. And from this state, we need to basically find all the artists that we find in the library.json. Let's see what I mean by that. If we open up our library.json, you can see that every track has an artist property. So what we are going to do is to loop over all of these tracks and save it and save inside an array uh, the artist that we found inside the property artist. But in case we found a duplicate artist, we do not add that artist to our list of artists since we don't want duplicate artists, obviously. So let's try to implement this particular logic. For doing that, we are going to use actually state.tracks.reduce. So we're going to use the reduce function. So the reduce function basically takes an accumulator and basically the current item that we are uh, checking, which is a track. So from here, what we are going to do is this one. The first thing is understand if the current artist that we are uh, evaluating uh, exists or not. So let's define a variable called existing artist. And here uh, we are going to use the accumulator and then do uh, accumulator dot find. Okay, actually you can see that we are getting some TypeScript error. I guess that we need to go here and say that we need to pass a second variable, uh, which will be the initial accumulator, which will be empty and mark it as a list of artists like that. So now the accumulator should work as expect. So here 
inside the accumulator dot find we are gonna retrieve the artist and we're gonna say we need to do an artist comparison and basically the um, uh, the check will be based on the track dot artist uh, name so uh, here we're saying that if the artist name is equal to the track dot artist that we are evaluating then that artist already exists so here we're gonna say if the artist already exists what we need to do so we need to push that track to the uh, list of tracks related to that artist otherwise in case it is a new a new artist we are going to push uh, inside the accumulator and we are going to do basically we are creating a new uh, artist so we are going to say track dot artist and if we don't have a name we are going to rename it unknown and the list of tracks uh, will be just the current track great so here we are missing a comma and yeah that should be it and finally we need to return the accumulator okay so uh, that should be a hit for our use artist now uh, we can see that if we over actually there is a slightly uh, problem uh, actually we don't need this uh, curly braces but we need to just return this function and now you can see that uh, use artist return a list of artists awesome so we can go back here and just uh, import this new hook so now we have a list of artists Okay, so from here, as always, we want also some kind of search func functionality. So I'm going to define the search uh, by using the use navigation search. And I'm going to pass here the search bar um, options. And this is going to be equal to a placeholder. Oh, actually, I make a mistake here. This should be an equal. And here we should have... Uh, actually let me rewrite this from the beginning so use navigation search and here we're gonna set the search bar option and specify the placeholder here that will display find in artists uh great so now we want also you can see that the search is displaying correctly uh what we want to do is also filtering our artist by the current search so so let's go here and let's define a use memo Let's define a, the callback function and in here we're going to do basically if not search we're going to return just the uh, artist list but if we have a search going on we're going to return artists dot filter dot artist name filter by passing the search actually we need to implement this artist name filter and basically we are going to implement inside the helpers uh, filter and basically here i'm going to pass this function uh, basically the artist name filter takes uh, a name and basically it compares the artist name uh, lower case with the current search lower case so let's save it and let's use this artist name filter over here and yeah actually here we need the artists and also this search awesome now we can pass the data over here and pass in the filtered artist awesome great so we actually need to do some other thing for example the scroll enable will be set to uh, false and we are gonna also set the content container style this will be this will have a padding top of 10 and also a padding bottom of 120 awesome also the scroll view will have some style and this will have the padding horizontal set to screen padding dot horizontal and also uh, we'll have a property called content actually will be content inset adjust my behavior set to automatic uh great so let's go back to our flat list and 
we are gonna also set the item separator component actually we need to define it so let's go here and let's set const item separator uh, component this will be basically a react component uh, where we are going to return a view and this view will have this style right here we're gonna use the utils uh, styles dot item uh, actually we don't need to define like that we can do just like here util style dot item separator and then merge it with uh, another style which will have a margin left of uh, 50 and a margin vertical of 12 uh, great so we can just go here and say item separator component uh, awesome in the same way we're gonna go here and say list footer component is gonna be the item separator component to have the, the separator also for the last item of our list and we're gonna also have a list empty component in case we search for an artist that does not exist so inside here we're gonna have a view and inside this view we're gonna have a text which is going to say no artist uh, found uh, we need to import the text from react native so text great yeah also we are gonna display a fast image and uh, over here we're gonna say source it's gonna be equal to your eye okay so here we are going to default we are gonna use the uh, no artist image uh, uri but you should know that if you want to implement the image for artist over here you can add the image artist or otherwise fall back to the unknown artist image uri great so let's set also a priority which is going to be fast image dot priority uh, dot normal uh, great uh, we need also style and this style will be uh, utils styles that empty content image uh, great okay at this point uh, we miss the most important part of this component which will be the render item so how we are going to render the current artist so let's go here and let's define a new react component over here we are going to extract the item which will be an artist so let's rename as the artist okay so uh, let's go here and basically we are going to return a link so everything will be wrapped inside a link from expo router and the href for this link is going to be inside artist slash and then we are gonna pass uh, the name of the artist so artist dot name uh, that way so this is because uh, when we are going to press artist item we are going to redirect to the artist detail, detail screen so later we are gonna go here and and we are going to implement a name.tsx and this will be the screen that is going to display the detail uh, of an artist that we selected awesome but we're going to do it later so let's go ahead and let's add some new stuff so here we need also to add the s child prop otherwise we are gonna have some problem rendering the content inside the link and over here we're gonna have a touchable highlight uh, great so this touchable highlight will have an active opacity of 0 0.8 and also we're gonna have uh, a parent view this foreign view will have a style set to styles dot artist name uh, actually it will be artist item container and this will be a styles we're going to define it later and then we're gonna have another view which will wrap a fast image and this fast image will have basically these two props let me just paste it over here so basically here we are rendering the unknown artist image uh, URI, setting a priority to normal and also setting the style to artist image. So let's go ahead and let's add these two styles. So let's scroll down and let's define our style sheet. We need to import this from React Native. Uh, where is it? React Native should be here. So let's say style sheet, awesome. And over here, I'm going also to 
uh, paste some styles. So let's go here and let's paste those styles. So we have a style for the artist item container. We have a style for the artist image and also a style for the artist name text. Uh, nothing too crazy. So let's go ahead inside our first image. And now under this view, uh, let's add another view. And inside this other view, we're going to display basically the name of the artist. So let's set the style actually here we're gonna have the text and we're gonna say artist.name awesome and obviously the number of lines will be one because we want and we don't want any wrapping behavior the style will be styles.artistName uh, text awesome and also we are gonna have I think it should be okay actually no because we need to go here and I guess that we need to set the width to be 100%. And now it should work as we expected. Ah, uh, great. So now our list of artists is displayed correctly. Awesome. And let's try to search for, for example, an artist. I don't know, maybe uh, telecasted. Okay, it's working. For example, Netflix. Yeah, yeah, it's working fine. Uh, awesome. Okay, the next thing that we're going to implement right now is the artist detail screen. So let's go here and let's define our artist detail screen. And this will be a React component. And since this will be a screen, we need to remember to default export this artist detail screen. Uh, great. So inside here, what we are going to do is first extracting the name of the artist. So let's rename, let's rename it at the artist uh, name. And for extracting it, we are gonna use the use local uh, search params from Expo Router. Uh, great. Also here we can just uh, type the expected type to be inside our search param. In this case, we're gonna have a name that is going to be a string. Uh, awesome. We can also add a check and say that if the, we are not gonna have, well, actually not here. So let's go ahead and say, let's get all the artists. So let's go here and say, use artists. Uh, let's imported from the store library and now we need to search for the artist that we were uh, looking for so let's go here and say you a uh, const artist is going to be artists dot find let's take the current artist and compare it by name so artist dot name is equal to artist name great so if we do not uh, if we don't find that artist, uh, basically we are going to maybe console warning um, artist uh, artist name not found, and also we are going to redirect the user using the redirect component from Expo Router. Return redirect, and we are going to use href. And over here, we are going to say, we're going to redirect the user to tabs.artist uh, screen. Uh, awesome. Okay, over here, we are going to return a view. And inside this view, we are going to have a scroll view. This parent view will have a style set to default styles.container. Let's import the view from React Native. And this scroll view will have the content inset adjustment behavior set to automatic and also the style will be we'll have a padding horizontal set to screen padding dot horizontal awesome okay so this is the exact same pattern that we use for the other screen for showing a scrollable list of items but inside here we are gonna have a custom component called artist tracks list. And we are going to display all the tracks related to that artist. So here we are going to pass artist to be the current artist. And now let's start implementing this artist tracks list. So 
we're going to implement it in a separate component. So let's go here inside component and let's create our artist tracks list.tsx and let's create this new component. So this component will take an input the artist. So let's define artist here. And we'll have a search functionality. So search will be equal to use navigation search. And we're gonna pass the search bar option to be equal to uh, hide when scrolling set to true. And also the placeholder be set to find in songs. Uh, great. Then we want to basically get all the artist tracks, but with uh, a possible search applied on. So let's define the variable filtered artists tracks. This will be a use memo with a callback function. And over here, we are going to do, we are going to return artist dot tracks dot filter and here we're gonna say track title filter and passing the search uh great over here we're gonna pass the artist dot tracks and also the search so basically here we are filtering amongst the tracks uh, uh related to that artist awesome so over here we are going to return our tracks uh list and we are going to pass all the necessary props, starting from the ID. So over here, we are going to say generate track list ID. We are going to pass the artist.name and we are going to pass the possible search. Awesome. Then we are going to have the scroll enabled set to uh, false. And also, we are going to also hide the queue controls when we are going to, we are going to also set the ID queue controls to true because we are going to include the queue controls directly from inside our adder. So let's go here and say let's list adder component to be equal to uh, styles.playlist adder container. Actually, I made a mistake. Actually, inside the list adder component, we are going to have a view. And actually, let's import this from React Native and let's import Okay, here we, not, we don't have to import anything actually. So here we're going to have also another view. And this view will have a style to be equals to styles.artwork uh, image container. And over here we are going to have uh, the basically the image of the uh, artist, even though uh, we are going to use the unknown track image uh, URI. Uh, I'm going also to define the stylish, the styles, and let's import style sheet. Okay, and uh, let's import all the necessary styles. So let's go here and let's paste all the necessary styles. So basically, what do we have imported here? We have imported a style for the adder container. We have imported an artwork image, a style for the artwork image container, uh, a style for the artist image, and finally a style for the artist name text. Nothing too crazy. So here I'm going to replace this with styles. And yeah, we should be uh, good to go. After the image, actually, we are going to display a text just under this image and the text will display the artist.name and uh, let's import the text from react native let's set the number of lines to 1 let's set the style to be equal to styles.artistName text let's save and also we are going to have uh, we're going to say that if the search dot length is equal to uh, zero, so we are going to, we are not going uh, any search uh, going on. Uh, we are going to display our uh, queue controls. So let's go here and let's define our queue controls. Let's import it and ask the missing attribute. And here we're going to pass the filtered 
artist tracks and also we're going to specify style with padding top set to 24 uh great so i think that that should be it so so actually we are still missing some type let's see at missing attribute what we are missing and obviously we are missing the list of tracks so let's go here and let's pass the artist dot tracks uh, great so now we can go back to our name.tsx file and we can import just this new artist tracks list so now if we go back here and we select for example an artist we get redirected to this new screen but actually is something is off with the header so let's check it out so what we are missing right now is that we actually define the file like the route but we do not actually declare it anywhere so we actually need to go inside our layout file in, uh, underneath the artist folder and just declare this stack screen so let's go here and let's define stack.screen and let's set the name to be uh, the name which is equal to the corresponding file name and then let's define some option so inside this option we're gonna set the other title other title to be empty then we're gonna have the adder we're gonna set the adder back visible set to true because we want to go back to the artists list and we're gonna have the adder style and this is going to be have a background color of colors dot background awesome and finally we are gonna have the adder tint color which is going to be uh, colors dot primary okay let's hit save and you can see that is working just fine awesome actually what i'm seeing right now is that uh the padding here is not correct so let's check this out so let's go back inside our uh, name.tsx file let's go inside the artist tracks list so over here we are missing the list header component style to be styles dot artist uh, header container so let's hit save and you can see that now we have the nice padding that we are looking for awesome so yeah now we should be able also to play the songs related for our uh, artist for example i can select one song from netflix and you can see that the queue is managed correctly. Uh, awesome. We can also go back to the list of artists and obviously select other possible artists. I don't know, maybe Track Tribe uh, or Patrick here, uh, Ryan McCaffrey, uh, you know, uh, whoever is your favorite artist. So, yeah, I think that should be it for our artist screen. I think that the next step will be implementing our playlist screen. Okay, next up in our menu will be implementing the playlist list screen. So let's take a look at the preview of these screens. So when we're going to click in the playlist tab, it's going to open this screen right here. So we are going to display a list of playlists with his related preview image. And when we uh, press or select a playlist, we are going to open a playlist detail screen that is going to show basically some information regarding the playlist along with all the tracks associated to that playlist. Awesome. So without further ado, let's start implementing these playlist screens so let's close all of these tabs and inside the app folder uh, inside the playlist let's open up the index file so right now the playlist screen is empty and we can just remove this text so over here we're gonna have the exact same pattern we use in the other uh, screen so we are gonna have a scroll view with the content inset adjustment behavior set to automatic 
and we're gonna have a style where we're gonna set the padding horizontal set to screen padding set to horizontal inside here we're gonna have a playlist actually playlists list and we are gonna pass this scroll enabled set to false uh, also a list of playlists that we want to render actually this needs an s and also on playlist press here we're gonna pass the handle playlist press so over here we're gonna add some new hook so first we're gonna add the search functionality by using use navigation search uh, here we're gonna pass the search bar option and pass the placeholder to be find in playlists then we are gonna need to extract a list of playlists and here we are gonna use the use playlists hook but actually we need to implement this use playlist so let's go inside our store actually store library and let's implement this hook so basically we are doing we are going to do the exact same thing uh, we did for calculating the uh, use artist look so if you remember from the library.json every track has a list of playlists where that track is associated so what we're going to do is to loop all over these tracks extract the playlist name and then just filter out the duplicate so let's go ahead let's go here and let's export const use playlists okay so here we're gonna use use library store and actually we're gonna have a proper hook with curly braces and we're gonna first extract this playlist we're gonna use the use library store and we're gonna extract the state and over here we are going to return state dot tracks dot reduce uh, the reduce will take an accumulator and the track and we are going to basically Okay, so over here we need to take track.playlists and loop over this playlist. Uh, here we're gonna have the playlist name. And so now we, we need to check if the current playlist already have been pushed inside the playlist that we discovered so far. So we're gonna say existing playlist going to be accumulator.find we're gonna say playlist and here we're gonna say playlist.name is going to be equal to playlist name actually we are getting some type inference problem I think that that is because us over here we need to pass the initial accumulator which will be of type playlist like that uh, awesome so so now we're going to say if the playlist we already discovered this playlist what we're going to do is to take the existing playlist and we're going to take the tracks and we're going to push the current track otherwise if we discover just a new playlist we're going to push inside the accumulator so we're going to do accumulator.push and we're going to create this new playlist the name will be the playlist uh, name uh, then we're gonna have the tracks which will be a single element array with the current track and then we're gonna have the artwork uh, preview which is going to be track.artwork and if we don't have the an artwork artwork defined we're gonna use unknown track image URI uh, awesome and finally we are going to return the accumulator as always okay that is not all okay actually I think that I made a mistake because this part goes uh, over here probably and now okay actually no this goes here and this also goes here yeah uh, this was the error that I, that I made uh, before actually this code maybe it could be refactored a little bit well so this one are the playlists so you can see that here we're gonna have a list of playlists and now uh, we had also to define 
basically we want to return this playlist but at the same time we want also to extract the add to playlist action that we are going to extract from the use library store so let's take the state and let's take state dot add to playlist and here we are going to return this add to playlist as well great so you can see that now our is playlist will return the playlist which is our list of playlists and an add to playlist function. Uh, awesome. So let's go back here it's our, inside our playlist screen uh, file. Let's import this use playlist and let's go ahead with the implementation. Now, since we have a uh, search functionality, I'm going to do the exact same pattern we did many other times. So filtered playlists uh, is going to be in a use memo. And I have a function here, a dependencies array over here. And we're going to do return playlists dot filter. And here we're gonna use playlist name uh, filter and passing the search functionality. Actually, uh, we need to implement this uh, function. So let's go inside our uh, helpers filters and let's paste this implementation actually not this one but uh, this one so let's go here and let's implement the playlist name filter where basically we take an input a search and a playlist and basically we uh, transform both the search and the current playlist name to lowercase and then compare them to see if it includes that search uh, awesome so let's save uh, let's import this playlist name filter and now here uh, we should have playlist of playlist and also the search. And also here we're going to pass the filtered playlist. Okay, so we are gonna also to define um, uh, the function const handle playlist uh, press. And this will take a playlist in input. Uh, playlist and is going to use the uh, basically when we press on a playlist we are going to redirect uh, we're going to use the router to redirect the user to the playlist detail screen so for doing that we are going to go here and use the use router from expo router and over here we're going to do router dot push and we're going to say slash tabs actually slash playlist and over here we are gonna pass the playlist name so we're gonna say playlist dot name awesome uh great so we're gonna pass this handle playlist here actually here we made a mistake so now we should go here inside the playlist folder and adding the file for the screen for the playlist detail screen so name.tsx and let's remember to add this also to the layout, uh, not this layout, but the layout from the playlist folder. So let's go here and let's add a new stack screen, stack.screen. And uh, let's set the name to be a uh, name between uh, square brackets. Let's define also some options. For example, the adder title will be empty. Uh, the adder back adder back visible why I do not get adder back I don't know what's going on okay adder back visible true adder style will be we'll have a background color colors dot background and then also the uh, adder tint color will be colors dot primary great uh, that should be hit. We are still getting some error on the playlist screen. Uh, let's see why. Yeah, because now we have to implement the playlist list component. So, okay, so let's go here under the components and let's create our playlist, actually playlist list.tsx. So export const playlist list and this will be a new React component. So, okay, here we're going to first define the type 
or of the props that this component will take an input. So we're gonna take an input a list of playlists. So playlist. Oops, I made that typo. Playlist. Okay, like that. And it will be an array. And then we're gonna take on playlist. And also we're gonna have on playlist press, which will take a playlist and will return byte. Awesome. And at the same time, we're gonna take some prop from uh, the flat list uh, props by passing the playlist as the item being uh, rendered. Great. So now we can extract this prop over here, playlist props. Here we're going to extract a list of playlist and playlist props that we're going to rename to handle playlist press and then all the flat list props. Okay, great. So, okay, it's so always here, over here, we're gonna have a search functionality. So let's use, use navigation uh, search. Let's pass the search bar option. And here we're gonna say placeholder is going to be fine in playlist. Then we are gonna filter our playlist tracks. So we're gonna filter our playlist. So const filtered playlist. And we're gonna use use memo. And we're going to return playlist. Oops, playlist dot filter. And here. We're gonna say playlist name filter by passing the current search. Okay, so use memo is not working because we need to pass a dependency array where we pass the list of playlist and the search. Awesome. Uh, great, so now we can implement our render function. So we're gonna have a flat list. Uh, let's import from React Native. We're gonna pass the data, will be our filtered playlist. Then we're gonna pass a content container style, which is going to be padding top 10 and a padding bottom of 128 as always. Uh, then we're gonna have an item separator component, uh, which will be item divider. And also the list footer component, which will also be the item divider. Okay, so the item divider, is the same that we did for many other uh, screens. So I'm gonna paste it here. Is this view? This is going to use this util style item separator, and we're going to uh, specify this uh, margin hover here. Uh, awesome. So let's go ahead and let's define also a list empty component. And over here, uh, we are going to just display this content. So basically we are going to display no playlist found with an image. So let's import React Native fast image. Let's import unknown track image URI and let's import details uh, styles. Actually we need to import text from uh, React Native. So let's go here and let's say text. Uh, great. Uh, so that was it for our list empty component. Over here, we are going also to spread all of our flat list props. And finally, I guess that we need the most important fun uh, props that will be render item. So render item will basically be a component. Over here, we are going to extract the item. This item will be a playlist. And we are going to render basically a new component called playlist item actually playlist list item and we're gonna pass the playlist that we want to render so playlist going to be this playlist and we're gonna also pass the on press function which will is gonna be this function over here we're going to do handle uh, playlist uh, press by passing this playlist uh, awesome so yeah at this point we miss this component playlist uh, list item that we are going to implement it really quickly. So let's go here and let's implement playlist uh, list item dot sx. Let's go here and say export const playlist uh, list item. Uh, this will be a new React component. 
let me just paste the, th the props that we're gonna take as input. So basically this component will take a playlist as input and also detachable highlight props. So let's go here and, and let's extract this prop. So here, let's say playlist list item props. And uh, here I'm going to extract the playlist and also all the uh, other props. Fine. So, okay, what we're going to render here, we are going to render a touchable highlight. So let's go here and this touchable highlight will have an active opacity of 0 0.8. And we're also going to pass all the props. Uh, let's import this touchable highlight. Uh, okay, I just made a mistake. This come from uh, React Native and not from React Native just to render. So keep uh, really um, attention to that type of mistake on the import because uh, are really subtle to debug sometimes. So let's go ahead and let's wrap. Uh, let's add this view, and this view uh, basically will have this style, and let's define our React Native style sheet. So let's go here, style sheet. And let me just paste uh, these um, styles. Uh, let me remove this comment. Uh, let me just quickly explain what style uh, we had. We have a style for the playlist item container. We have a style for the playlist artwork image and a style for the playlist name uh, text. Nothing too crazy, let's go ahead. So let's go styles.playlist item container. So this will be the, our item container. We will have a view that will wrap our first image. Our first image as always will have the exact same prop that we use multiple times. So I'm going to just paste it here. So this will be the basically the thumbnail of the the playlist and then let's go ahead and under the image we are gonna have this view with this style so we're gonna use flex direction set to row we're gonna have a justify content set to space between then we're gonna have a line item set to center and finally a width of 100% awesome. So inside this view, we're going to render two things. First, a text, which is going to display the playlist.name. Uh, let's import text from React Native. Uh, great. And this text will have a number of lines set to one and also a style set to styles.playlistName uh, text. Awesome. And finally, uh, we're going to use an icon called undesign, uh, which I'm going to import from expo vector icon. And this will be have a name set to right, decide set to 16, color set to colors dot icon, and style set to have an opacity of 0 0.5 and yeah that should be it for our uh, playlist list item so let's go back to our playlist list and let's import it actually here we can use add components okay let's hit save but still something is off because Inside the index, we need to import our playlist list. Uh, let's go inside here. And you can see uh, that is actually uh, looking fine. So we have our playlist with its title, uh, its thumbnail, and also this icon over here that hints the user that if he is going to press over, it's going to be redirected to the playlist detail uh, screen. Uh, so good. Now, next step will be, I think, implementing the playlist uh, detail screen. Uh, let's just check it real quickly. So we are going to implement this screen. Uh, we are going to implement basically uh, the image title of the 
uh, playlist, the two buttons, and a list of the playlist songs. Uh, great. Okay, then let's start implementing our playlist detail uh, screen. So actually, we already done some of the work because we already have our name uh, .sx file, which is the uh, playlist detail screen, and we already included the stack screen uh, inside the layout.tsx. So we're gonna go here and let's define our playlist screen. This will be a new React component, and as always, let export as default, so playlist screen. Okay, so here we have different things going on. So for example, we need to access the name of the playlist. So let's rename this as playlist name and let's use the use local search params. Let's define the type, the type will be name string. If you are wondering, this is going to be passed uh, whenever we uh, press on this item, the expo router we uh, is going to pass this uh, name search params param inside this screen. Awesome. Uh, then we are going to use the use playlist book. So let's go here and extract this playlist. Then we have to find for the playlist we want to render. So let's go here and say playlist dot find. And here let's say playlist playlist dot name is equal to the uh, playlist name that we are searching for. In case we are do not find the current playlist, we are going to console.warn uh, this uh, string playlist uh, playlist name uh, was not found. And in case we are going to uh, redirect the user the playlist to the list of playlist uh, screen. Over here, we're gonna say tabs.playlist, and that should be it. In case we found our playlist, we are going to uh, return uh, basically a view that's imported from React Native, and this view will wrap a scroll view inside. And this scroll view will have a content inset adjustment behavior set to automatic. And also the style set to padding horizontal set to screen padding dot horizontal. And inside here we are going to render the playlist tracks uh, tracks list or the all the track all the list of tracks related to that playlist. So over here, we are actually missing a style, which is going to be the default styles.container. Uh, great. So here we are going to plus, pass a playlist prop, which is going to be the current playlist. And yeah, I think that's it for this component. Uh, now we are going to implement this playlist tracks list. So let's go here. Let's close the app folder and let's create a new file called playlist tracks list.tsx. Here, let's export playlist tracks uh, list. And here we are going to say, okay, and here basically we are going to return a tracks uh, list. But obviously, we have to define all the necessary uh, props. So what we know, we know that we have the a search functionality going on here. So we are going to use the use navigation search. Here we are going to pass the search bar option and we are going to set hide when scrolling to true. And also we're going to set a placeholder set to find in playlist. Oops, playlist. Uh, great. Uh, then we are going to filter out our playlist tracks and we're gonna use use memo for that uh, let's define the dependency array let's import this hook and here we are going to basically return playlist so here we're gonna say oh actually i uh, was missing something because here we need playlist 
as input. So here I'm going to say playlist as the playlist type. Uh, great. So here we can say playlist dot tracks dot filter, and we are going to use track title filter and passing the search, uh, the current search. Here we're gonna pass the playlist dot tracks and passing the search and this filtered playlist tracks is going to be passed inside our tracks list and for our uh, id uh, we are going to use the generate tracks list id and we're going to pass playlist dot name and also the search ah uh, great so we have also to specify some other props for example scroll enabled is going to be false also we are gonna hide the queue controls because we are gonna add it manually. And also we are going to specify a list adder component styles, which is going to be equal to styles dot playlist adder container. So here, what I'm going to do now will be importing style sheet from React Native, then go here and specify some style and here I'm gonna paste this uh, recomputed style. So let's import all the missing imports on sides here. So, so here basically we are four styles going on, one for the playlist other container, one for the artwork image container, one for the artwork image itself, and one for the playlist name uh, text. So let's go ahead yeah, let's go ahead and after the list adder component, I'm gonna pass the list adder component itself, which is going to be a view. Let's import this view. And so over here, we are gonna have first uh, another view for wrapping a fast, oops, for wrapping a fast image. And this frappy image will have these two properties uh, that I'm going to paste. So the URI will be the playlist. And actually we are going to display the artwork preview of the playlist. So basically uh, what I'm referring to is uh, uh, this stuff over here, this image over here. Okay, so let's close it. I don't know if it is going to work. So. If I'm going, okay, it's not working because we still have some problem. Maybe we can import it and save it and then go inside the playlist and try to open up. Okay, right now we are only displaying the list of playlists, the list of tracks associated to that playlist. So uh, let's go ahead. And so after the uh, fast image, so after this, we're going to render a text. Uh, which is going to be imported from React Native. And we're going to display the playlist.name. And here we're gonna set the number of lines to one and the style set to styles.playlistNameText. Okay, you can see that we have something going on. Awesome. And also we're gonna say that if the search.land uh, is equal to zero. Uh, we are gonna, oops, we are gonna display basically the queue controls, and we need to pass the obviously the playlist tracks as the queue, and also specifying a style which is going to be, but it's going to have a padding top of twenty four. Uh, great. Uh, something is still off uh, with the layout, uh, but we are going to uh, fix it soon. Okay, so I just figured out what the problem uh, was, is that inside the view that wraps the fast image, we need to have another style, and this style is going to be styles.artworkImageContainer. And now it looks fine. Awesome. You can see, for example, that we have this playlist called Chill, and these are all the songs that I categorized as a Chill song, 
and I put it in, in there. So awesome. Actually, we can just to play uh, with it a bit. So you can see that it works. Also, skip into the songs. Uh, you can see that uh, we remain always in the same queue related to this playlist. And also, we can find song key inside the playlist. For example, I don't know, maybe I want to search for anxiety. And you can see that whenever I type a search, the queue controls are eyed, but the exact time and I'm going to clear the search, they're going to pop up uh, again. So awesome. Uh, we can also go back and just take a look at the other playlist that I created for uh, for this music player application. And yeah, I think that we are almost there. What we are missing right now are basically some uh, missing functionality. If we go back to the song screen, we are missing basically the shortcuts menu to add or remove a track to the favorite list or to add a specific song to uh, a specific playlist. Also, uh, we want to have the toggling favorite functionality inside the player screen by just tapping on the heart icon. And also I want to just quick, uh, give you a quick demo of the repeat uh, mode. So without further ado, let's move on with this other feature. Okay then, so I think it's time for implementing this option right here. But first, uh, let's take a quick look at a preview of this uh, menu. So you can see that basically every time that we are going to press on this three dots icon, a native UI menu is going to pop up and we are going to have two options displayed here. We're gonna have the first option that will be the possibility to add that song to uh, a playlist. And the second option will be adding or removing that track from the favorites. So to, to implement this uh, menu, we are going to use a um, third party uh, library actually. And that library is called React Native Menu. So the library it basically it provides this uh, awesome Actually, I'm not able to uh, zoom uh, more than that. So basically, we'll provide this uh, native uh, UI menu. And the fine thing is that it works also uh, on Android and it provides also different type of menu. For example, here we have a sort of uh, action sheet, but we are going to use the default one, which is uh, this one. So this installation, you can see here, we have to uh, basically install install the library and then also rebuild our native direct, uh, directory, in this case, our iOS directory. So, so let's go ahead and so let's open up a terminal and let's run npx expo install a React Native menu. Great. I'm not so, uh, let's try to rerun. Uh, so now let's rerun npx expo uh, prebuild dash p ios in order to clear the native directories and rebuild them and update the, uh, the eventual file that needs to be updated. And then let's run npx expo run ios and let's see if it does it work. While the application is rebuilding, uh, let's go ahead and let's implement a new component called track shortcuts uh, menu dot uh, tsx. So this will basically will the component that will pop up when we are going to uh, press on those three icons. So track shortcuts menu going to be a new React component, and so let's define the prop of this type of this component so it will be track uh, meanwhile the application is restarted and new props and it seems to work and this will be props with children 
and we're going to specify uh, and we're going to uh, take the track in which we want to display uh, the those option uh, great so now let's go here and let's extract these props from track shortcut menu props let's go here extract the track and also extract the children great so over here we're gonna to basically return this menu view is the component that comes from the react native menu and inside we are going to render the children awesome this menu view takes different uh, props the first are the action that we need to display so in our case we're gonna have two action the first uh, so every action uh, needs an ID, a title, and an image, but also other props, but I encourage you to take a look at the libraries. But for our case, we need only these three props. So let's start with uh, the first uh, ID. For example, we be add to uh, playlist, which basically identify the option that we uh, select. The title, which will be add to playlist and then an image and here we can specify images directly uh, from uh, the ios or android set of icons in this case since i know that uh, we are in a ios application i'm going to use the plus icon awesome uh, we are going to also have a second option that is going to be dynamic or or like that second option could be add uh, to favorite or remove from favorite so it will be a sort of dynamic option so to do that we're gonna have to define the uh, variable is favorite which is going to be equal to track rating is equal to one so our track is favorite if the track uh, the rating is one and now on top of of our action uh we're going to put this id so if it this the uh, the track has been favorite we are going to display uh, actually we are going to use the id remove from favorite uh, otherwise we're going to use the add to favorites oops favorites oh, yeah, also here it's favorites and the title also will be dynamic so if it's favorite uh, we're going to display uh, remove from favorites otherwise we're going to display add to favorites and also the image the image will be this is favorite we're gonna use star dot fill otherwise we're gonna use star uh awesome uh let's save it and also we are going to to specify a non-press action and basically this on press action uh, is going to be executed every time we press an option inside our menu so over here we are going to define a, a function uh, an event handler function called handle press action uh, which is going to take an id which is going to be an, a string and is going to be uh, to execute uh, something the most important thing here is to call this handle press action but we need to pass the id so here the id is going to be retrieved from the native event and from the native event we're going to take the event so the event is going to be the id uh, awesome so inside this handle press function we're gonna uh, do a pattern matching so we're gonna use the match from ts pattern and we're gonna match this id so in case we the id is add to favorites what we are going to do is execute an async function and inside this async function basically we want to toggle the track uh, from being favorite or not so if you remember we had an hook called this favorites and from this hook we can extract the toggle track favorite function that we are going to implement it later and here basically what we are going to do is to toggle the track favorite and passing the current track but we also need another logic in case basically if the track is in the favorite queue uh, we need to add it so we're going to do if 
So here, to perform this kind of logic, we are going to use the hook use q, which is going to return to us the active q id. Awesome. So from here, what we can say, we can say that if the active q id, uh, which is key, can be potentially uh, null, starts with the string favorites, uh, we are going to do await track player oops track player dot uh, let's import the track player from react native track player dot add uh, track so in this way basically we are adding this song to the queue if you are running the if the the internal queue that is running is the favorites one so for example let's say that i go here and I'm running the, I don't know, maybe I, I go here and run this uh, Hotlanda song. So now my, uh, my queue is the one related to the favorite one. So if I go here and add, add, uh, and add this as you fade away to the favorite uh, queue, this should be displayed inside the favorite screen, but also to the current queue. So in order to do that, this is the actual logic that we need. Okay, so uh, we can go ahead with other pattern matching and say, wait, we want, we are instead removing from favorites. Uh, we are going to execute another async function. And in this function, we are gonna also, we are gonna also toggle track from favorite and pass in the track. But at the same time, we need to do the reverse logic of what we did exactly here. So we're gonna do if active QID starts with favorites. Uh, what we're going to do is taking the current queue, so track player get queue, and we are going to identify the track to remove by doing queue.find index queue track. And we're going to do q uh, track dot url is equal to track dot url, and then remove it by using track player dot remove uh, track to remove. Awesome. So just to break up here, what we are saying is that if the track is in the favorite queue, we need to remove it. So we need to remove it. Awesome. Uh, okay. So. We have also a third case, which is going to be the add to playlist. And here, what we are going to do, uh, actually, if we want to add a song to a playlist, basically, we are going to uh, show up a model that is going to uh, show up from top to bottom. And inside this model, we are going to be able to select the playlist where uh, we want uh, the playlist to be added. So uh, since the model are can be handled by Expo Router, uh, what we can do here is first uh, gaining access to the router using the use router hook from Expo Router. And from here, what we're going to do is to do router.push. And then here we're gonna specify a path name. This path name will be uh, models. Uh, slash add to playlist and we are gonna pass uh, some params and we're gonna pass the url of the basically the track url so basically here we are passing the identifier of the track that we want to add to a playlist and the identifier is the url so let's go here and say track.url also you can see that here we are getting some TypeScript errors. I don't know why it uh, TypeScript is complaining. I think it's because uh, is unable to infer the correct type. So I will leave this comment for now. It should work. And as a reminder here, we are opening the add to playlist uh, model. So there is also a fallback case in case we are handling a case that is not meant to be in case we receive an event that is not supposed to be uh, handled. And here we're gonna say unknown uh, menu action. And here we're gonna 
print the ID. Awesome. So that should be it for our truck shortcuts menu. And actually what we can do is start uh, using it by hooking it up uh, to this icon right here. So if you remember this item is named truck, uh, should be truck uh, list item. And uh, if we scroll down, this one is the basically the truck option menu. So what we're going to do is to wrap it with the truck shortcuts menu uh, like that. So we don't need this. And here we're going to pass the truck as the current truck. Yeah, the truck should be come from here, I think, yeah. And let's save. And now if we press on the, um, the icons, it shows up, but uh, actually the songs has also started. That because when we click on this icon, we want to stop the propagation of the event handler for triggering the, you know, the handler of the item to start playing the song. So for doing that, uh, we need to wrap this component with the uh, Util component called stop propagation. And let's move this inside here and let's implement uh, this uh, like util components that I'm going to, uh, to create inside an uh, util folder underneath the components folder. So let's go here and create stop propagation.tsx. So let's go. So let's go here and say export const stop propagation. Here we're gonna get the children. The props will be props with children. Actually, let's do like that. Here we're gonna say props with children. And here we're gonna wrap everything with a view. We're gonna play the children inside. Import the view. And over here we're gonna have the prop on start ruled set responder and we're gonna pass it through so this is to capture the event basically uh, the event bubble event and then we're gonna say on touch and uh, we're gonna take the event and we're gonna say event dot stop propagation and that should be enough for uh, resolving our problem now let's go here and let's import this component Let's save it uh, here. Actually, let me just import from add components. Also here, uh, add slash components. Okay, uh, just to have a clearer code base. And now that should work as expected. So let's go here and let's try to click on this icon. You can see that it worked without triggering the track player, without triggering the other event handlers. Now, if I go here and I click over the truck item, you can see that um, the trucks starts um, as we expect. But if we go here, you know, it works uh, without triggering any other handler. And from here, we're gonna be able to add the truck to the favorites or add to the playlist. So our next step will be implementing is to function. Great, so we can start by implementing those two uh, function and the place where we are gonna implement this business logic will be inside the library store. So let's close these tabs and let's open the library store. Great, if you remember, if we scroll all the way up, uh, we have these two function toggle track favorite and add to playlist and actually the current implementation is empty so we are going to implement these two function just right here let's start with the toggle track favorite so here what we're going to do is to take the track that we want to toggle and it, that should be infer inferred as a track uh, let's see and 
basically what we are going to do is to update the current uh, state. So uh, here we are gonna uh, extract the state and we are going to return the updated state. So this new updated state, basically what we are going to do. Okay, so here we need to update our uh, tracks that are stored inside the library to find the track that we need to update and toggling the property rating uh, between zero or one. So what we're going to do is to update the tracks property. So just right here, we're gonna do state.tracks.map. This map will return us the current track that we are iterating to. And inside here, we're gonna to update um, some conditional logic. So first we need to check if the current track is the one that we want to update. And we're going to do this by checking the URL. So current track URL is equal to the track dot URL. Then we're going to update the, uh, the rating for uh, this current track. Basically here, we just return the current track, but we are going to update the rating. And the rating will just be if the current track dot rating um, is equal to one, it becomes zero, otherwise it become one. So this is basically a logic for applying the toggling or that means uh, adding or removing from the favorites. Then if we, instead, we are evaluating the track that is not the one that we want to update, we just return the current uh, track. Awesome. Actually, I misplaced the return, so, uh, here we have to return the current track just uh, here. Uh, great, now it should be correct. Instead, for the add to playlist, we are doing something similar. So in the add to playlist, we are basically gonna have the track and the playlist uh, name. And here we are gonna always, we're gonna apply the same logic by using the set function, extracting the state, and then returning the updated state. In the updated state, you're going to update the tracks to be state.tracks.map. And we are currently, we are gonna to extract the current track. And from here, we are going to apply uh, also some additional, uh, apply some conditional uh, logic. And we're gonna say if the current track.url is equal to the track.url. We are going to return the current track, but at the same time, we are going to update the playlist property of this track. And basically what we are going to do is to first spread all the current uh, track playlist where these uh, tracks belongs to by doing like that. And in case uh, does not appertain to any uh, track playlist, we're gonna use an empty array, and then we're gonna add, or we're going to append the playlist name. Otherwise, we are just going to return the current track. Uh, here, we're missing a comma, and we should be good to go. So just to be more clear, let's open up our library.json. So uh, add, adding to a playlist basically means that, uh, for example, if I want this track to uh, pertain to a new uh, playlist, basically what we're going to do is to add the new playlist name uh, just here. Uh, so basically we are going to append the new playlist name at the end of this playlist array. And instead for the toggle track favorite, basically we are going to map uh, all over these uh, tracks, find the track that we want to update and update the rating property. Uh, great. So this was the two function that we were uh, missing. And now we are able to apply uh, this function uh, where we need. So uh, let's go back. So now let's just refresh our application. And you can see that these are the currently uh, favorites tracks that we have. And let's try to see if the add to favorite work as we expect. For example, this Desert Pro, these tracks, Desert Pro, let's try to add to the favorites. So 
I just, I should have added to the favorites. Now, if I open it again, uh, it say remove from, from favorites. And now if we go here, you can see that, uh, okay, we are Desert Bro, we are the Desert Bro. So you can see that is actually right here. Awesome. And we can do actually the same. Go here and remove from favorite. And you can see that is actually removed. Uh, you might remember that if we open up a song with our player screen, uh, like this, for example, we have this button right here to adding or removing a song from the favorite. Actually, this button is not yet implemented, so we are going to implement it now. Okay, then, so if we open up the player screen, which is this one, you might remember that the is favorite and the toggle favorite are currently mocked. So what we are going to do now is to uh, remove this uh, mocked code and we are going to use a new hook called new struck player favorite. And from this hook, we are going to extract is favorite and also toggle favorite. So now we have to implement this struct player favorite. So let's go here inside the hooks folder and let's create a new hook called struct player favorite.sx. And here we are going to export this struct player favorite. So this hook basically will first extract the currently active track by using use active track from React Native Track Player. Then it's going also to extract all the favorites track and also the function toggle track favorite. And we'll extract this information from the hook use favorites. Now uh, the first thing that we are going to compute is understanding if this track is favorite or not. So we are going to compute the is favorite to be uh, favorites.find and we are going to compare the track and we are going to say if track.url is equal to active track uh, URL, and we are going to say and we are going to check if the rating is equal to one. So basically in this uh, code snippet, we're basically finding for the, for the active track inside the list of our favorite song. And we are checking if the current track is favorite. You might be wondering, wait, why we need to check from the use favorite tracks, uh, whether this, uh, the track that we want is favorite or not. Couldn't we just do active track dot rating is equal to one? Actually, no, because the problem is that this use active track uh, comes directly comes directly from the track player internal uh, state. And as you might remember, we do not want to use the track player internal state to make assumption. We want always use our Zustand state manager that we set up for uh, making our assumption. For example, checking if the track that we want to update is uh, fa has been favorite or not by the user. So this is the reason uh, why we need to make this double check that might not be so intuitive. Uh, great. So here we are going to return this is favorite, but we are going to also to return a function called toggle favorite. And this function will be wrapped inside a use callback. So like that. And here we're going to do, first we're going to retrieve the ID of the currently active track. So we're going to do track player dot get active track index. And then we're going to do if the ID of the current track is null, we're going to return. Actually, we are here is important to say 
not to use the triple equal but the uh, equal equal because we in that way we are going to check also for undefined uh, value and here we are going to do we are going to update the metadata for this truck uh, inside the truck player internal state so what we are going to do we are going to do truck player update metadata for truck and inside here we are going to pass the id of the function of the truck that we want to update and we're going to also update the rating so is the this truck was uh was favorite now we're gonna pass zero otherwise we're gonna pass one awesome in the same way we're gonna do if the active truck is uh defined we're going to do toggle truck favorite by passing this active truck and as you might remember, this toggle truck favorite comes from the use favorites. So basically inside this function, uh, we are basically we are uh, updating both the truck player internal uh, state here. So here we are updating uh, uh, truck player internal state and the application uh, internal state over here so here we are updating the app internal state inside the dependency array we're going to pass his favorite also toggle truck favorite and also active truck uh, awesome now we're gonna to uh, export this toggle favorite and our use truck player favorite hook should be ready to be used so let's go back to our player.sx and let's import this new hook. Great. Now this toggle favorite should be used. Uh, let's search for toggle favorite and should be used by our favorite button icon. So what is going to happen is every time we are going to press this button, the truck will be added or removed from the favorites. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to refresh the application. I'm going to select a truck, for example, this one. And here I'm going to set it as favorite. So it uh, does not seem to work as expected. And that's because I think I didn't save this file. So let me just refresh the file, uh, the application again. Let me just select this song. Let me open. Uh, let's try to press this button. And you can see that it seems to work. So now we unfavorite the song and now we favorite. Okay, now the this track anxiety should be should have been favorite. So if I go back to favorites, you can see that has been added here. Awesome. Let's try to go back here and remove it from the favorite. You can see that has been removed from the favorite list. Awesome. And so now we have a way for a favorite or unfavorite the truck also from our player screen. Awesome. Another thing that I would like to show you is the truck player repeat mode button. Actually, this button, as you remember, can be toggled between three different states of queue and truck. Right now it's set in queue mode. That means that when the current queue is finished, so when it uh, reached this, uh, the last song, the queue gets like repeated uh, all over again. So we'll restart from uh, the beginning. The other like state that we have are the off mode. So basically the off mode means that, means that when the queue uh, is gonna be uh, finished, the, uh, the queue will not loop over again so it will stop over there but actually there is a more like more uh, common functionalities which is the third state which is loop over the current song and this is super awesome because uh, if we set this mode and we uh, seek to the end of the track you can see that the tracks will start over again let's check it out You can see has the truck has been restarted again a super cool feature that every music player should have
Great, so now that we have a way to add or removing tracks from the favorites list, we can also add the option to add these tracks to a playlist. So for doing that, we're gonna need a new screen, uh, which is going to be a model screen that will pop, that will show up when we press to add playlist. Uh, right now, anything happens because we don't have that screen yet, but we are gonna to implement it now. Okay, before starting, let's take a look at a preview of this model. So this will be our model that will show up when we are going to select the add to playlist. Basically will be a pop-up that will animate from top, from bottom towards the top. And from inside this model, we're gonna be able to display a list of screen where the selected track could be added. Obviously, we are gonna also display the playlist where that tracks does not belong it yet. So for example, here we are selecting a track that does not belong to any playlist. So all the playlists are shown, but in case we are, for example, selecting a track that is already present in all the playlists that we have, this list will be actually empty because it will not be possible to re-add it to a playlist which already it belongs to. So let's go ahead and let's start implementing this screen. As we said before, this will be a screen that will be implemented as a inside our app folder. And if you remember, we previously defined a link that was redirecting inside models. And inside here, we add add to playlist. So let's define our add to playlist model. And this will be basically will return a safe area view from a React Native safe area context. And actually I misspelled return here. And inside we are going to show a list of playlist. So playlist list. We already have this component from before. And here, if you remember correctly, we need to pass a list of playlists and also on playlist press. So let's implement these two props. So the playlist will come from the hook use playlist. And from here, we are going to extract all the playlists available and also add to the add to playlist function. Then we are gonna need also the tracks. So use tracks. And also, uh, we want to know what track we should try to add to a specific playlist. So over here, we are going to define our track URL, which we are gonna take from the use all local search params. And the type will be of track URL. And here we're going to specify track of property URL. Great, so now we should have basically a TypeScript support over here. In fact, you can, in fact, you can see that the track URL is a string. Uh, awesome. What else we need? Actually, we need to find, uh, once we have the track URL, we have all the tracks. Actually, let's move this here like that. Uh, we need to find the track that we want to add. So let's do track is equal to tracks dot find going to so here we're gonna say current track and we are gonna do the track dot url is equal to the current track dot url awesome and uh, that way we should be able to find the track that we need okay actually i made a mistake here because this one should be track url and now it should work here we're gonna say that if the track is not uh, is null or undefined, we are going to return null. Or actually, we are going to, uh, we are not going to render anything because the track was not found. So basically here, track was not found. Awesome. And then we need also to uh, retrieve the available playlist. Available playlists. 
So the available playlists basically are the playlists in which the tracks can be added. So we need to filter out all the playlists where the tracks already belongs. So we are gonna do playlists.filter and inside here we are gonna do playlist and here we're gonna do playlist.tracks.sum so sum it means that there is at least one match and here we're gonna extract it current track and we're gonna say if the actually not track but we're gonna say playlist track and we're gonna say playlist track dot url is equal to track dot url great and that should be it awesome this available playlist will is going to be added to the list of playlists that we want to render and now we need to define on playlist press so let's define over here handle playlist press this will be an async function that will take a playlist type will be of type playlist let's import it and what it will do so here what we're going to do is to first run a to playlist of the current track and we're going to pass the playlist dot name remember this add to playlist comes from the use playlist hook uh, and also what we are going to do is to do router dot dismiss and this uh, should close the model Actually, we need this router uh, to access this router. So we're gonna do router equals to use router hook. Awesome, and now it works. There is also another check where we're gonna say that if the current queue is the playlist uh, we are adding to, uh, we need to add the track at the end of the queue. So basically here we're gonna say that if the active queue ID uh, starts with and here we're gonna say playlist.name we're gonna do await track player dot and we're gonna add to the current queue. So now we need to access this active queue ID and if you remember we can just uh, use the hook use queue and here extracting the active queue ID. And now it should work just fine. Finally, we are gonna add this event handler just here, handle playlist press, and it should work as we expect. Now what we're missing is to add this model uh, to be presented as a model. So what we're gonna do is to open the root layout, which is gonna be this one, scroll it down inside the root navigation, and here, just below, the stack screen player we're gonna add a new stack we're gonna add a new stack dot screen and inside here we're gonna specify what is the file that we want to open so it's gonna be model slash add to playlist and we're gonna specify also some option inside this option we're gonna specify the presentation which is going to be a model then we're gonna specify the other style which is gonna have a background color of colors dot background, and also we're gonna specify an adder title, which is going to be add to playlist, and also an adder title style, which is going to have color of colors dot primary, actually colors dot text. Sorry, and that should be it. Let's refresh our application. And it seems that we have some kind of error to say that no route name models add to playlist exists in SS children. So let's see what is going, uh, what is happening. So we should have added here, add to playlist. Uh, okay, I guess that we are not, the problem is that is we are not exporting this component. So let's go here and say export default add to playlist model great and now it should work as expected okay let's try it out so let's say that i want to add this song to a playlist i go here and click uh, and press add to playlist and you can see that it seems to work but so we have the title 
and a search bar, but there is some things off with the content inside. So let's go back to our add to playlist. Okay, the problem that we are having is that we need some kind of uh, style inside our safe area view. So let's go here and let's add uh, this styles.model container and also a padding top of header height. So, so let's first get this header height from uh, here, for example. So const uh, header height is equal to use header height. And this will come, I guess, from uh, React Navigation Elements. Okay, so from here, let's do this way. Okay, so we are gonna have some padding top equals to the header height. And now we need to define this styles.model container. So let's go here and let's say React Native Style Sheet. Let's go inside the React Native, which I think I didn't import yet. So Let's go here, let's define style sheet from React Native, and let's define our model container to be equal to, actually we are gonna use the default styles.container, and now let's import this, and also let's specify a padding horizontal equal to screen padding dot horizontal. Uh, great, now let's try it again. And it's working fine. You can see that uh, since this song, uh, Guess You'll Never Know, it already belongs to the instrumental playlist and rap playlist. When we are trying to add to a new playlist, only the chill playlist does show because it is the only one where we can add it. So let's check if I, uh, if I select the chill playlist. You can see that the model gets dismissed. Now, if we, uh, if we go back to the playlist and open up the chill playlist, uh, you can see that uh, it's working fine. Actually, it's not working fine because I see two, uh, duplicate, uh, two duplicate tracks. So I think something uh, is off. Okay, I guess that I figured out what the problem was. And I think that the problem is inside our comp our model add to playlist. So if we scroll all the way up, uh, you might remember this function where we calculate the available playlist. And basically here, the filter function is not completely correct because we need to put a exclamation mark uh, as a prefix of the entire predicate. Otherwise, we are basically reversing the logic. So instead of taking the playlist in which the track does not belong, we were taking the tracks in which the tracks was already inside it. So just adding this exclamation mark basically will reverse the logic. So so let's try it again. Now I go here and say add to playlist. And now you can see that only instrumental and rap so, uh, shows up. So let's try to select rap, go back to playlist, open up rap. And you can see that now we have the guess I'll never know tracks and is only repeated only once because before was not present. Also, let's make also, for example, another, another test. For example, let's say chill. So chill has only this song. And I think that, for example, as you fade away, should not be inside chill. So what we are going to do is to add to playlist. Chill is correctly displayed. We add it. And then you can see that the as you fade away song is appearing correctly and we can actually play it. Awesome. And this was our last piece of functionality that our app will feature. There's going to be one last 
cherry, I will say, on top of our cake, which will be enabling remote controls. So let's see what remote controls are. So when I'm talking about remote controls, basically I mean the possibility of, uh, let me just minimize this a bit, is basically the possibility of controls our songs from within the lock screen or even inside the control center. So basically is this UI right here uh, that is going to display when you lock your screen on when you pull down your control center. I'm just going to show up uh, the control center uh, version. So, so if you go here, you can see that uh, basically I just swipe down and the control center shows up. And basically from here, we should be able to have a an, uh, set of capabilities to control our background uh, music. Actually, uh, achieving this feature is quite simple using React uh, Track Native Player, but there is a big caveat. So I, uh, according to the React Native uh, Track Player documentation, this functionality can be added only to uh, specific devices. And these devices are basically not iOS simulator. So you can see in this part that as of, as of iOS simulator version 11, Apple has removed support for control center and now playing info from the simulator. We will not able to test lock screen controls on recent version of iOS simulators. So the only option that we can have are either test it on real devices or download older version of iOS simulator. So I, unfortunately, I wasn't able to retrieve a uh, older version of iOS simulator since it was quite uh, complicated to do, especially with the latest version of macOS. So what I can show you is just a screen recording of my real devices. And that is actually this uh, video that I'm overlaying right now. You can see that I'm able to play Sorry, uh, just let me stop this and move it down. You can see that I'm able to uh, play the song or stop the song using the lock screen uh, controls. I'm able to I'm able to skip the song to the next song or previous song, and also I should be able to open up directly my application. And you can see basically that. Uh, when I unlock my uh, device, the music that the application that I was using was actually uh, the application that we uh, were building. So I'm going to show you right now how to set up these capabilities inside our application. But keep in mind that this functionality can only be tested on real devices or only on very old iOS simulator. Also, uh, keep in mind that uh, there is also another step to take in consideration. Let me minimize this. And inside iOS, to allow background audio playback on iOS, we will need to activate the audio, airplay, and picture-in-picture -picture background mode inside Xcode. Without activating, the audio will only play when the app is in the foreground. So I can just quickly show you how to add this capability using Xcode. So let's open up Xcode. Now let's open an existing project. And let's go under Project, YouTube, Music Player, and let's select the iOS folder. Okay, from here, let's select the music player. Let's go under sign in and capabilities. And here actually is already active, but I'm going to remove it. Also push notification. So I will go here, press on plus capability, search for background modes. And here we are going to activate this property right here, which is audio, airplay, and picture in picture. Uh, great. Once 
uh, we have done it, uh, we should be able to add these capabilities to our music player application. So the first thing that we need to do is closing this tab and then open up the constants folder. And here we're going to define the playback service.ts. So we're going to import from within this file, the track player and also the event from React Native Track Player. And now we're going to export our playback service. And we are going to do, this will be an async function. And inside this async function, we're going to do track player dot add event listener. And we are going to listen for the event uh, remote play. And we are going to do when the remote play is executed, we are going to do track player dot play. And the same for the other events. For example, track player add event listener uh, event dot remote pause. And here we are going to execute track player dot pause. Then uh, we're also going to add three other event listener, which are going to be the remote stop, where we are going to stop our track player, remote next to skip to the next song, and remote previous to skip to the previous song. Great. Then what we need to do is going back to our app root layout, uh, scroll all the way up, and just under the prevent auto sync, we are going to do track player dot register playback service. And here we are going to pass the initialized function where we are going to return back the playback service. Uh, great. Uh, there is also another thing to set up, and this is inside the use setup track player. So inside here, you might remember that we were executing, uh, we have this hook, but this hook was actually running the setup player function that was this function right here. So here we need to do another step, which is track player dot update options. And from within this update option, we are going to specify, for example, the rating type, which is going to be rating type dot heart. Uh, this is actually something that we should have done previously, but uh, it's not too late. And then we, we are going to add the capabilities that we need. In this case, we are going to add, actually, this is an array. We're going to add capability dot play. Uh, then we're going to have capability.pose. Then capability.skip to next. Also capability.skip to previous. And also capability.stop. Obviously here you can add all the capabilities that you want and that will fit into your application feature and functionality. So that should be it for setting up our uh, remote controls features. And uh, that should be it actually for our application uh, itself. So let's try just to refresh it. And yeah, I think that that should be it for the application. It should work as uh, X expected and we should have all the features that uh, we need for this application. Okay guys, I think that's it for this project. I hope that you find this video useful, but most importantly, I hope that you learned something throughout this journey. In case you need the complete source code of this project, down in the description, you will find the official GitHub repository along with the link to my Discord server, in case you need help or just want to chat with me. As always, if you like the video, please leave a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't and we will catch in the next video.